in the plant. Mm -hmm. So it's like everybody knows that doesn't even work there knows like a couple of stories already. Don't, don't, listen. Like, I'm, I'm surprised, you know, how they got, like, all the Instagram pages and stuff like that. I'm surprised there's not an IG page dedicated to that. It was. They took it down. Oh, God. Hold the J up. Listen. <laughs> oh, yeah, they did have yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. They did yeah. have oh. one. That was a real they thing. They did want air oh, people wow. out like it. Dog, that was a real thing. <laughs> that's crazy. It was on Instagram, like, two, three years ago, yep. wasn't it? Yep. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I wish I would have caught that. I remember that. And a couple hey, of them. For some dudes on my job, it was pic- a menu. But oh. <laughs> and a couple pictures that had posted some inappropriate pictures of some women, I believe, too. So is that there. why it got taken down? Duh. 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 I, I wish I would have I remember that. It was wild. Yeah. It was wild. Man, here's the thing. I would never, ever, ever mess with anybody at work, man. First of all, when I first got there, somebody had just got stabbed over a chick. So oh, yeah, I remember straight. that. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Like, I'm not fighting nobody over no woman because if she was my woman, I shouldn't have to fight you. She should let it be known that she's already taken. So mm-hmm. I look stupid for fighting. But in the plant, man, it's so messy, man. It's so messy. Like, the, <laughs> Okay, so this is a true story. They had this was I don't know if this this had to be like two years ago. They had a a, a ball for the employees at the plant, right? Hater's ball, <laughs> huh? It should have been. You, you know, C's was there. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Live I wish I was. I wish I was. I'm gonna tell you that suit. Showing I wish up, I like, was. Like draft day, open it up. <laughs> I'm telling. I'm, I would tell you why I wish I was there because people were telling me after the fact. So you know when they have a work type ball, mm-hmm. guess what happens? The spouses want to go. Mm-hmm. Who's that bad for? Everybody that has a work spouse work. on the line. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I was hearing so many stories about people trying to keep <laughs> like they real spouse. Why did they tell them that that was going on though? Huh? Why because did they tell them this that? the problem workers were in Detroit. Everybody knows somebody that works at a plant. Oh, yeah, well, like you so said, yeah, yeah, you go yeah, on yeah. Facebook and you happen to see a flyer, somebody or somebody post about it. Hey, they got this going on at your job. Oh yeah. Oh, we should go. Oh man. So now you got to try to keep your real spouse from your work spouse. I was hearing so many stories. I mean, people were getting mad. I actually thought this one dude, I'm not going to say his name, was actually mad that his work spouse was dancing with somebody else. His <laughs> wife sitting right next to him, and he got the nerve to be mad. I like that. Plant, Plant confessions. confessions. <laughs> <laughs> I like is, that. I mean, real talk. It's, it's, New man. segment. New segment alert. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, it, it's, it's a real thing, man. And it's, it's so funny to me. Uh, when I see people at work just getting involved, it's like, dog, that's always going to turn messy. Because y'all fall out, but you got to work with them 10 hours a day. No, that like ain't... I like I tell my homeboy, I think the funniest thing is when he tell me that somebody was messing with somebody, then they break up or they divorce or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it's like your homeboy that you used to work on one shift with is now smashing your girl that you was with oh. on, a, on a different shift, and you still got to see both of them, Man. or you at least know them and people that they talk, doing that. And exactly. people talk cash money shit in the line, too. So you got to, not only do you got to see that, but then you got to deal with people talking to. Yeah. Oh, that was me. I would have, like, okay. Who do you prioritize in that situation? Because, like, your, your real wife or your work wife? Because technically, you, you see you your, was, I would say you your, your real wife, wife more, man, because right? she's taking half. That's true. Yeah, see, <laughs> who, who do you prioritize in this situation? I've never been, I don't know. I don't know what that situation is like. I don't know. What the, fuck don't, fuck don't y'all. Know what y'all not going to put me in that box. I don't know <laughs> what that shit is either. Whatever, stop. All the club pictures you're taking well, with the shoes. That. You walk, nah. you, you already walk like Conor McGregor. I'm alone, McGregor. too. You don't see so, no other feet in the background. You already look like Conor McGregor. Listen, so hey, look, how, how, we, how we know you the one taking the picture? Oh, oh, sees. What Come shoes on, are those? No, that happens. But oh, oh baby, I don't I know. Tune into this new podcast. That's a definite yes. plant confession that right there. That doesn't happen. No. I, first of all, get out of here. You know, you know. <laughs> I stay to myself for a number of reasons. And you I let, stay them, to you let them come to you. Well, we understand. No, I'm telling you, like outside of the show, I'm such an introvert. You, I, was, I swear to God, do I be at my man, desk? I don't, bullshit. I, look, That's man, all I, I can't wait for that. us to phone. I can't wait for the phone calls to get up because all my coworkers they would tell you. They would tell you, like, yo, like, I mean, I'm personable, but they'd be like, yo, you a totally different person outside of here. Because at my, I'm at my desk. I'm either working on the show, sleep. Damn. And, Damn, yeah, I don't Chrysler? care about that. Damn, Chrysler? <laughs> they know. They know. <laughs> yo, I don't worry about that. Wait. Hold on. Tell one of those two things. Wait. Tell them out. Hold on. Tell them out. Tell them out. Homer Simpson at the nuclear plant. <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> what it is. All right. Hold on. Tell them out. So you at Chrysler not doing no Chrysler-related work, huh? Mm. I'm skilled trades, baby. We ain't got to do nothing until the line go down. <laughs> Look, production bro, get paid to work. <laughs> yeah. 
production gets paid to work. Living the we, life, we get man. That straight. You living the life. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you pulled a girl number at work, bro. I did a who? You pulled a girl number at work before. Number three. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he didn't have to pull it. It was just dropped at his desk. Yeah. I wouldn't either confirm nor deny those allegations. Exactly. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? What's up? Detroit is definitely in the building via your headphones, stereo and speakers. Of course, this is your man, the African Caesar. And this is the Sneaker Box Sunday evening show right here on World Sports Network. And I am joined by the rest of the crew. You already know we got the combination of slam dunks, Gino, and dunks. You there already you know. All relaxed, side to look, make sure it happened. Yeah, it happened. When they combine, they make the focus up symbol. That's then, right. <laughs> on the other end of the table, we got my uh, my counterpart, Guru. Who, What's going on, people? I, I was thinking about this the other day because I remember Gino had this whole thing about his streak. Time out. We got to wish him a happy belated birthday publicly. Oh, yeah, happy belated birthday to Thank Guru. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank y'all. Hold your turn. Thank you. Um, he turned wiser. Plus. He turned wiser. He said, 30 what? 30 plus. 30 plus. Okay, I only thought women were vain about the age, okay? Mm, yeah. Um But no, I so mean, Kwame. Oh, so we're gonna start the show, Kwame. You fresh oh. out, you gave you a little <laughs> pastor service today. You I made so out. much money at that church today. <laughs> no, um I <laughs> I can only imagine you actually preaching at a church. No, if I, I preach, trust me. With I, the hat on, like, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Me. If I, if you saw me preaching at a church, best believe somebody getting paid. It's probably me. But uh, going back to what I was gonna say initially, though, about because I remember Guru, Gina was he had this streak thing. I forgot how many episodes you went without missing the show, but you've obviously fumbled that ball since then. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to think like. Cause you you were here a long. I mean, it was almost like two years strong, if if that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think who actually showed up to more shows. You a guru, and I think Guru still has the edge on you. I mean, he should. He's been here. I was gonna say he's like the longest. Proportionately, yeah. I probably have the best attendance. I've missed two total in two years. You just want to <laughs> insert yourself into the conversation. Mm -hmm. just back That's kind of how teamwork works. Uh, nah. uh, so. Co-host, you know. <laughs> no, I think Guru has the streak too. Well, I mean, technically, you got the streak. I don't think I count. Like, I, I mean, obviously, I. Have I, to I we'll make sure to remember that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> make sure to remember that. I uh, see a Michelin. See a Michelin group chat. Uh, well, anyway. I think I'm on my Udonis Haslam. I think I've been in it for a while. You said what now? My Udonis Haslam. I think I've been. Uh, yeah, you've been in it for a minute. I'm trying to think because I mean, you, I'm I, a jump I, man and single girl. And probably got more probably on me. Because I I was going. I don't know what made me think of it. I, I was going to say, Guru was the one that has seen people come and go on this show. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. He's been the one constant. He is the uh, the Bobby Birds on my James Brown. Well, there was uh, other people when I started, and the second I got here, they left. Oh, they that tells you a lot, don't it? Yeah. It's about I'm, me. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> Truth hurts, doesn't it? Um, yes. Damn, what I was going to say. Oh, because oh, I was doing a best of episode, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize how early you appear. I don't know why I thought you showed up later, but you actually showed up on like episode like 31, 32. Like that was 31, 32? Yeah. Oh, and, wow. But that's back when we was doing sh two shows a week. So you actually showed up. I mean, theoretically, it's a lot earlier than you mm -hmm. think, you know. Oh, okay. And I, so, I thought when I came on, it was like 70, 100 when I came in the basement. But a lot of No, that was like actually thir episode like 30, 31 oh, wow. okay. that you showed up in the basement. And then everything went to hell from there. Well, that's crazy. Uh, I can't tell. <laughs> Pretty nice where we at. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. Well, it went to hell for a second, and then it rebounded. Then it went to hell again, and it rebounded. So. Uh, I mean, this must be why people do devilish things, because I guess it's nice in hell. Man, that rebound right. is nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> okay. On that note, okay. Uh, okay. we got a lot of things we're going to talk about. Obviously, the hot topic right now is the whole Nike trademark in the Air Jordan 1 and what that means for Air Jordan 1 bootleggers out there. Uh, another thing we're definitely going to get into, um, we got a lot of legal stories that we want to dive into. And uh, so we actually have a lawyer in studio. So I actually want to talk to uh, John, our resident lawyer, John Maui. Am I saying all right? Maui? Mohi, John Mohi. That's a good angle. That is a very good angle. You look suave. Actually, you do. You do look like you need a pipe. Like seriously. <laughs> I don't always do the sneaker box. It feel like it should I be do. like a fireplace behind you. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I agree. So we got John in studio to talk about that stuff, and we also have Rocky Parish, the CEO owner of Rock Deep, uh, joining us as well later on the show. But first, let's get into all the uh, other things we got to get into. Social media. Follow us on social media. You can follow us on social media on Twitter at TSB underscore show. You can follow us on Instagram 
by looking up or following the sneaker box underscore show and then you can follow us on facebook by looking up the sneaker box radio show page and you can leave us a voicemail if there's anything you want to uh respond to as far as something we said on the show or you have any sneaker comments or questions you can call us at 248 uh 677 1803 and leave us a voicemail and we'll respond to it on a later show um and this is episode 297 which means we're three away from episode 300 Here's the kicker, and I guess I, I guess I, I could ask you guys off the show, or I could just ask you now. That weekend is Fourth of July weekend, so I don't know. <laughs> I gotta cut you off. Was that Mr. <clears throat> Lawyer over here will actually be having a soiree of his own on that date, so I will not be able to attend. He, he oh, that's look, the perfect time to celebrate three hundred. He no, looks like the type of guy I, to have a soiree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's very interesting because someone literally used that exact word to describe it. Did you turn on your mic? Separate from you, I'm I'm. It's almost also my birthday, so it's gonna be like a combined get together. Did you turn, did you turn on the mic? Because I'm not sure people can hear you. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> It's not his first rodeo. I'm, no, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just, just wanted to make sure. We've had mistakes before. Ain't that right easy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was the issue of turning the mics off, not on. But anyway, um, yeah, so we'll be celebrating episode 300. So That's 4th of July weekend. 4th of July weekend. So I don't know. We'll figure out what to do since Dunks came The 4th of here. July is actually on a Sunday, right? Yeah. Yeah. So mm. since there's soirees going on, we might so have to. can we do fireworks indoor? Yeah, uh, I think so. Celebrate? Y'all gonna be celebrate? I think so. You celebrate Fourth of July? I, I'm celebrate June. I take the day off. Oh, I yeah. celebrate Bastille Day. It's July 14th. <clears throat> Listen, if they gonna pay me to stay home, I'm gonna be home getting paid. Uh, okay. Now, whether or not I celebrate, I mean, it depends yeah, on what you call right. celebrating. Yeah. yeah like so. sitting at home watching the ID channel. Uh, Sounds like celebration. <laughs> <to me. laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Right. gotcha. No. I guess that's celebrating. Uh, so, I mean, I guess nobody's excited about 300. Okay. But can we do fireworks indoor? I'm pretty sure Wilbur Sports would allow it. All right, Matt. We insure it, right, Easy? I have no clue. Oh, okay. Only one uh, way to find out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, know. Probably not on Sundays. Oh, man. So let's get right into it. Now, let me say this before I go into it as far as our Fab Five sneaker releases of the week. This is one of the most lackluster weeks ever. So You, you said that the past. So maybe it's just me then. Maybe I'm just like not in, as excited about sneakers. You're not really into sneakers. Me? If, it's, if it's not a George, if it's not a, let me, I'm pretty sure. Hold up, let me pull up the rundown since I get an email. To Go ahead. Too. Yeah. Cause I'm surprised you ain't say nothing. But why he's doing that? Because I really want to get through a lot of stuff today. Uh, we'll start with number five. We have the Nike Women's Dunk Low Sunset Post. I'm not nice, liking them. Nice woman. I'm sure. actually surprised. Now, of all people, I'm actually surprised you ain't feeling these. Because you are the, the resident shiny, dunk lover. Candy looking shoe. I mean, it's a woman yeah. though. Yeah, I don't. I'm not for not for me. If I was a woman, not for me either. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was uh, whoa, whoa. Is there something you want to share with us? You, <laughs> you could be yourself here. But like he said, if like you could be yourself he met today, you could be yourself here, man. We so we're, we're all inclusive. Then Number four. Nope. <laughs> we're, if I were a woman, okay, you sound like Gladys Knight. Come we're family on. around here. <laughs> yes, uh, we don't judge around here. Um, not at all. But no, Oscar I'm actually surprised by that because it seems like I, I, yeah, this for was a while a I didn't week. think there was an ugly dunk you didn't like, and so now there's a lot of ugly dunks I don't like, and they're overdoing it, and I'm waiting for the bubble to burst. We agree. We definitely agree on that, I, um, man. But it's easy, from just from watching Nike, it's easier for them to fuck up a normal dunk than an SB dunk because there's so many coming out. Then we've got three this week. True. Yeah, but don't you think that's kind of not necessarily the plan is to fuck it up, but. The plan is to oversaturate the market with just the dunk because they know yeah, the dunk is popular. Yeah, they just can't all be winners, and that's not one of them. Uh, hmm. Or maybe they're buying, they're making shoes, and then the reseller sell it for them. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think there's resale. Profit <laughs> I mean, on that. that's why they make so many because they know there's gonna be. I mean, maybe buy not any real people. profit. Guru has a point. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Like, because it's funny because somebody made a uh, comment earlier today uh, talking about uh, actually commenting on the video that we posted. Or I posted. A uh, conversation we had about Nike working with the uh, Border Patrol, and like they didn't believe it because they didn't believe Nike when they said that they were going to work on bots. But I'm like, one of those things actually hurts the bottom dollar. It ain't bots. Bots actually help them in some way because it helps them sell through as far it helps as inventory. Create the hype, no matter what, whether it's that and it creates sell through for them. You know, so you're right. So you know, with the bots, they don't care about the bots. This is why they have done basically nothing uh to eliminate them whereas with the fakes that in some way hurts the bottom dollar so i could see them put more effort into that 
Were they? They sure were. Shout out Nike. Oh. <laughs> Did wow. you get a pair? Oh, yeah, obviously you got a pair, so. We're going to get there, too. Is that how you got your pair? Yes. <laughs> mm. Wow. Mm. <sighs> Oh boy! Imagine complaining about the drug dealers and then selling drugs out the you, back. You know, you know, probably <laughs> each, someone. You know, probably each one of these Oregon PEs is probably bugged. You're like a drug dealing cop. That's why you set them all up here. <laughs> exactly. Denzel. And they're real PEs. Yeah, these are <laughs> real PEs. PEs. Player five fifteens. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you talking about my shoe now? Yeah, none of that was retail. Was really not your shoes. Back? Gifted. Why? Nah. Why everything? He, remo he not, removed the duck on the no, back. No, this to stay this humble. one. This is the equipment parent manager's personal pair. So that's why it says team on the back. So, you know. The only one that didn't come out is that pair. And, for, and you know how I got that pair? This, I don't know why. But Someone sent it to you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I hope so. No. Stole it. You broke I will. It. No. No dunks. No. The, <laughs> I got that shoot because the hype, for whatever reason, wasn't there for the LeBron soldiers. Except for that one pack. You know, the uh, the Kyrie LeBron pack. Other than that, the wasn't, hype wasn't there for those LeBron soldiers. So, for whatever reason, I don't know if people didn't know that those were a PE, but I was able to get them for relatively cheap. Free 99. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all good, man. man you, you, you got connected. connected. Portland. You connected, man. Yeah. I'm blacklisted right now, according well, to some people. Wi so. Wi Fi C's. Wi Fi C's. You I'm blacklisted man. right now. So, I mean, shoot. That's you why you're bugging the table. Huh? That's why you bugging the table. I'm bugging the table. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. You bugging the table. Dunk's about to drop so much shit. <laughs> I mean, he just told on himself about them. Like, the, the, hey. I'm here to share information. The, I don't know. I think I'm a news anchor. You guys call this podcast. This is my news TV. Station. No, I, I I agree with you on some level that we are. It, but you sometimes I'm Ron Burgundy. But sometimes you treat like a, <laughs> sometimes you treat like a confession booth. <laughs> That's part of it. That's That's part of it. it. I want to connect with the listeners and be transparent and open. And you are them. honest. You are honest, though. I give you that. But, um, but you don't want to conflicted, you know, but honest. But sees who's a kingpin himself doesn't re you know reveal all his moves and whereabouts. Thank you for connection. revealing all that. Like so, thank I you. Mean, I don't have to. You're gonna do it. I didn't say me. that you did. I said you don't reveal them. Mm -hmm. I didn't say where you. You know what I'm saying? We didn't say that you get off. I mean, I mean, at yeah, six o'clock p.m. on Saturday nights, you go to the port and pick up your packages. We didn't say nothing like that. You I mean, setting saying? the shoes on the table is oh, basically right. him telling it. You well, know, Mondays are laundrying days. So you go to the laundromat, you know, to make your rounds. Like, we didn't say <laughs> what, that. I just said what? that you don't reveal those things. Did you, you, know? did you say Monday is laundering day? <laughs> <laughs> I have a schedule. <laughs> I'm the most, according to Guru, I'm the most efficient drug dealer he knows. Thanks, uh, I mean, actually, that's smart. Have a schedule and stick to it. What's not smart is having somebody on the other end of the table telling on your business. But uh, on that on that note, number four. I mean, Dunk shows you. I tell you what I do, and you can't stop it. So, Chapo, C's, all Dunk's the other is big white. Wait, hold up. You putting them in the category with El Chapo? Yeah. <laughs> Dunk's is white. He can get away a lot more shit than I can. You're goddamn right. Uh, <laughs> like that jersey. <laughs> I, you know, can we go ahead and point out that Gino next to me is also wearing the hundreds? Hold on, can, 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 can I say this? Can I say this? It is definitely a t-shirt. Can I say this? You know when you see something coming, and before you can say, get out the way, the car just... Hey, look, that was like I a, saw that coming a mile away before I could say, dunks, look out. Now that, 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 that was like a picture with a wind-up. Like you, you can tell. You can see it. He Guru was, has this look on his face. His you know, I'm going to tell you, because when Guru when Guru's about to say something slick, he has this look on his face. It's this oh, twinkle man. in his eye. That little gleam going Yeah. Oh, man. Like, he knows. Like, he, he gets excited. Guru has the same face for every emotion, except... <laughs> When he's about to say something I think funny, his, his beard get to shimmer in a little bit. No, absolutely, <laughs> got a sheen to it. <laughs> absolutely not, man. Oh my goodness, I got my. But yeah. I saw that coming all the way, nah, and I, I, don't. <laughs> I didn't. How like, about, go how, back and watch the tape. You see me turning my head because I didn't want to see that car crash. <laughs> you said he gets away with stuff. He says darn right. I did not. I did not see that was coming. You no, never you, made nah, that before, nah, man. Tell, that okay. was like that was a, that was an alley oop slam. <laughs> darn. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that Dunk just owns it. He's like, no, uh, Dunk. Man, man. It I'm just here to make the little 30 second clips to post on the Instagram and give everyone a laugh yeah. and keep it moving. Actually, you, you actually look pretty good on a lot of the clips. Yeah, I, I don't know right. what that jersey gonna look good, but you know it's gonna be. Hell. Now you know. Well, this is a prime action. opportunity to say, "Help that brother." Are you that brother's keeper when it comes to jerseys? Hey, you know what? Maybe that, I'm gonna do. Hey, see, could, don't put this on me. <laughs> there it goes. Hold on, are you that brother's fault? keeper? How is this are my you fault? that brother's keeper when it comes to the jerseys? Clearly, this is a cry for help. That's not the first time I've heard that this week. But you guys make you a point. Drop this beater on. 
You guys make a point, and now I'm gonna bother you just like Guru does. Now I want a jersey. <laughs> for him, it's not. I don't even care what jersey. Give me a WWF jersey. Like this. For Dunks, it's not a one. It's a need right now, man. Get that man. Get that man a jersey. Hold on, bro. Yeah. If Mitchell Ness, you're listening, send get me a large. Get that man a jersey, We got man. you, man. We get got that man you. I'm, I'm going to talk to my man tomorrow. Uh, okay, dog, number four. Guru, man. You got tears in my eyes right now. <laughs> hey, Ridiculous. Guru, this might have been what it finally took to get us a jersey. <laughs> exactly, I, uh, man. Hey, but you guys are going to be pissed when it's me that hey, gets the jersey. Right. That's what's going to happen. Hey, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> we had to use dunks as a sacrificial exactly. whale. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's my goodness. Number four, man. Uh, we got the Nike LeBron 18, best one through nine. I don't, best one through nine as far as I didn't get the concept behind uh, it. They just took colorways from shoes from one through nine and put them on one. Like the bottom is from the fours. and So it's like back, a what the? Yeah. But it's not a what the. I prefer they just say what the, man. Uh, you said best one I mean, but, I mean it's hard explain. to put 18 shoes on one shoe, so that's what they did. One through nine. <clears throat> well, I mean, but they could have just did what the. I mean, they did the what the fives and it was just three of the colorways, you know, the original colorways or whatnot. I don't know. I Some of these names. When they, and I saw best one through nine, I, I kind of guessed what you said, mm -hmm. but I was kind of looking to say, okay, like best one through nine as far as and just looking for you know, a little leave bit it more. to Nike to not I do like any the, type of storytelling. The, the the I promise one this year, real cold. Can you put like that shoe back up? That green, it's like a greenish teal. The I yeah. promise one for the school this year, that one's dope. That's how it stores. And I actually, I don't have a beef with this shoe. I would get it for my daughter. Like this seems more like a kid's shoe <laughs> to me. I mean, with all the colors in there, it does look like a... I mean, we just seen a dunk with the same colors on it. it but it's it was a girl's shoe. shoe. Yeah, it was a women's shoe, right. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, this looks more like a kid's shoe. I wouldn't even say a women's shoe. This seems more of a kid's shoe. But, you know, to each his own. Uh, number three, we have the Nike Dunk Low 399, the pair that Dunks brought in today. Cool. Like, honestly, I, I really, real talk, I think you could, on this list, you can take two through five and just kind of interchange there, There's a couple dunks like this. I don't know if they're all free 99 or, or they've got like a, a similar concept. They all have reminiscent vibes of that eBay dunk back from like what, 2005 ish or something? Did that actually come out or was that just like some type of friends and family type thing? They made one to take pictures and destroyed it. And then they made one pair and auctioned it uh, okay. in, in the size of the winner. And okay. I don't know who owns it, but I'm sure it would sell for Why well, make the shoe to destroy? I don't understand that. It was, just, it was a proof of concept. Yeah, sure and then the whoever stuff won they it, they made with? in their size. No, I'm saying, but like you said, they made the show and destroyed it. Just keep it. Just put it in an archive. Yeah, I think uh, the cut-up pieces were in a museum at some point. Mm. I'm not wow. sure. Wow, okay. Sad thing is people, including me, would probably buy the cut-up pieces. That's pretty, I'd buy that an, is I would buy an NFT of Ooh. the cut-up pieces right, if I could. We'll go with that. Why? Why? <clears throat> I don't even know why I'm asking you because I already know I'm going down a rabbit hole that I don't want to go down. But Why? Uh, something in my head tells oh. me to do it. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you. The opportunity to flip, is that, is that why? Or do you actually want to own it? I feel like it would be like owning a little part of history. Okay. It was pretty significant. It's one of the greatest collaborations of all time. I mean, it's not like the Berlin Wall. I mean, it's just, you know. It's just... Is it possible to pull up a picture of the eBay dunk? Yeah, yeah. eBay Nike dunk. Um, but no, I, I just, yeah. When you, as soon as you said NFT, my eyes just wanted to roll back in my skull. Point with uh, some of the dunks they're putting out, the free 99, they're like slightly reminiscent or like teetering on all right. colorways. Uh, you know. I mean, I do, I agree with you. They're kind of overdoing it with the dunks. These are cool. They all right. Yeah. Now, that's supposed to be a white pair that's supposed to be coming out too, right? Or is yeah. it? No. Yeah. Yeah. I, think I like the black period. pair more than I like the white pair. Why is that? Because it's black. Want to argue that? Uh, it comes down to black or white. I'm always choosing black. Um, <laughs> That's why you're the worst, I, man. That's why you're the worst. There you go. And they and why did they make this in retail? <laughs> this was a one of one. I'm glad they didn't. Um, I would have bought this one. This was back before wait, wait, StockX. Wait, wait, wait. This was back before Goat. This was when if you wanted to buy and sell, like all you had was eBay. Yeah. And this was at the the peak of SB hype. So I got a question. You time. you would buy these, but not the uh, that you on like the. Um, the Sunset Pulse joints that we showed at first? Correct. The Sunsets, hmm. there's something wrong. Those metallic colors, it's not working for me. Like, that, hmm. they're both patent, but I'm not feeling the, met the metallic vibes hmm, as I okay. stutter. Uh, number two, we have the Airdrop Retro 1 High OG Light Fusion Red. Uh, oh boy. How many pairs did you get, Cease? Oh, the None. McDonald's pairs? None. Hey, I'm, everyone's going to attack me. It's an ugly color. I get it. I held them in hand. 
It's amazing fucking quality leather. I'm going to go ahead and say shattered backboard quality. Don't Ooh. tell Caesar. I already know everyone's going to attack me, but I held them. It was extremely I nice. Promise you they not, I promise you they're not shattered backboard leather. They're, but. but they're up there. Or they're nicer than what we've seen in a long time. Have you seen this shoe? In person? No. So how would you say you go? Because I was told by somebody in the know that there was a reason why the shattered backboard is considered one of the best as far as quality. Because that's the one of the few times they actually tried to. There were some obsidians that were really nice, but it, not all of them were consistent. Well, I'll give you that. I, there, now, there are some shoes that are better as far as, like, the softness and, I guess you could say, quality of the leather. But, but Guru knows this. When we went up there, they, they were telling us, like, we can add the tumble effect. You know, it doesn't actually, you know, that's not a good gauge as far as what is or isn't good leather. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people see, oh, they tumble. Must be good leather. And it's like, mm, not necessarily. I was impressed with the Ronald McDonald ones. No, <laughs> that's what they remind me of too. I ain't mad at that you. Not bad. I mean, that was kind of Ronald cool. McDonald Hulk Hogan ish vibes to me. Um, I would have kept him if I thought of Hulk Hogan. You should have. What I want with the shirt. Yeah, definitely that Dunkelmania shirt. Yeah, but I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't crazy about him. I didn't go after him. Um, the but only you shoe, don't have to. <sighs> they go after you. Oh my god. <clears throat> Number one. And this is the shoe. This is the only shoe I went after this week. <coughs> Number one Which is I'm the surprised. Skepta Special Edition Nike Air Max Tailwind 5 Buddy Crown. Now, I got the blue pair. Really? And, yeah, the blue pair is, I'm telling you, you get them in hand. Like, the, the pictures don't do them justice at all. Like, this isn't a C shoe in my mind. It's like, go honestly. back. Yeah. Go back. As a matter of fact, I tell anybody, go look at any review you can. I don't know if people got these in hand uh, right now to do a review video, but if you can't, go watch the blue. You got them? I got the blue pair. Go back and watch like a uh, go and watch some video reviews of the blue pair. Like you see them in hand and on foot. Like it's, it's, the pictures don't do that shoe justice at all. Um, and so I was really impressed with the shoe with the blue pair. And so I was like, well, you so know, what do you like pair. about the shoes? The colors? The, the I like the uh, well, quality, I like the I like the, the concept because it was you know the butterfly. Now I don't know if the I mean the red shoe to, to me is just them just kind of taking that one blue pair. He's got the look in his eye. He's just waiting to set you up for a contradiction. Nah, right? No, no, he, that, no that's, not the, that's not the twinkle. That's not the twinkle. He grew I'm on the right now. That's the setup. Yes. That's him trying to instigate. Nah. So <laughs> he, he, he just threw the change up. Uh, that's all. That's all. I'm just asking a legitimate question. You're like, Guru, you going to let him say that? No. So the blue pair, it was all based on the butterfly. And, you know, you can kind of tell by the – the because he took two – different Air Max designs and kind of added them to that one uh, shoe and then the iridescent effect mm -hmm. on the tongue and on the heel. To me, and, you know, you look at the butterfly and you see the inspiration and you see how the shoe was executed. I was like, yeah, that's pretty dope. And then when you see the shoe in the hand, like the quality, Dwight would tell you, Dwight, you got a pair, right? <laughs> Am I lying? Fire. See? And so. The around here is good. Duh, yeah, the le I'm telling you, yes, yes. The shoe. The shoe is dope, I thought. So the one thing you and Dwight actually agree on. I know. I mean, Dwight usually ain't got good taste, but this <laughs> today. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no. <laughs> uh, Dwight the type of dude to take the ugly chick home without getting drunk. But no, so I. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, uh, well, at least he's getting some. Right? But no. Uh, well, you know, they can't all be winners. I like how you got defensive right there. But well, no, I, <laughs> I will say this, though. I get that that shoe doesn't, you know, work for everybody. But like I said, like, I, I thought as far as the concept and the execution, I thought it was a dope shoe. And they actually and they made, made it comfortable. That, they actually made that in the 15? Man, I'm surprised. That was the cutoff. Because that, that's what I'm really shocked about. I, like, I'm shocked. It's typically an Air Max like that, I feel like they usually go up to a 14. Yeah. So, of course, get the blue pair, the red yeah. pair got to be bought, too. Excuse me. Well, of course you got to buy a red Actually, pair. Actually, the red pair already came out. You know why I had to get a red pair, Guru. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah, John Wall in the middle of a game throwing up signs. <laughs> so I got to. Uh, <laughs> you get to skip the banner on the screen right now. I got to. Um, <laughs> God damn it. I can't remember what I'm trying to say. So, no, I got the the red pair actually came out, I think, in the UK. Because Skepta, you know, he's a rapper in the UK, I believe. So yes, uh, is he? Am, am I saying that? Am I right? Confirmed. Okay, I cool. What he on? You want Drake albums or something? Uh, I, I, feel I don't like listen to Drake. Hey, look, all, all I know is I, he he's big in the UK. What'd you say? I said you're getting old. I am right. I don't know who these kids are. These what is it? Grime rap, making they noise. Grime. I'm not sure what it's called over there. Making noise over beats. I heard Chinese drill music, and I was like, hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Hold up. Time out. You want to impersonate that too? Absolutely. Not. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, I, have to look, I like my streak of positive reviews. I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to look that up. Go look it up. Yeah. Oh no, that it, no they, he's some. sounding like Lil Dirk, but he's Asian, and they flowing with the same pattern and everything. Yes, it's, I got it. Are there we, captions we, on the screen? Like, oh my no, god, he's rapping in English. Oh, so he's rapping, oh he's, shit. Okay, yeah. Least, yeah. I can yeah go I'm still go hard. Huh? Okay. They go. They go hard. Wait, what? Chinese, I, heard, I, heard I, was, I was like, take it back. I was like, like on, on Chinese drill music. Chinese drill. Is that the music you get hype of when you do taekwondo? I don't even know taekwondo. Oh, okay. I was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, before the match, that's what you listening to. Chicken doom pong doom. Ugliest release of the week. Yeah, right now. Let me guess. We're gonna start with uh, the UZ seven hundred and flames. Adidas using ah, 700 boost. This is not the You know how I know? Because member. he decides. Ah, uh, this is not Yeah, I'm trash. This is I'm not trash. This is not trash. trash. I don't care what nobody says. I'm pretty sure you're trash. 700 comes you could have found a rebuy. You could have run a Adidas. I really tried. Could, actually, could, actually, there was a Nike. The there was a Nike Air Max something. It's some type of new model thing. And it was, it was close. It was real, real close. I mean, honestly, but you want you ain't want to offend your Nike Connect, so you could have put. You watch last week. You could put that <laughs> dunk that was number right, five. Did you watch last there. week's show? Huh? You could put that dunk that was number five in the top five up there as the ugliest. They ain't ugly. Man, that you went ham. They still reached out and sent you an invitation. So to where? We know. We all know here. We're right, and y'all don't know. They ain't mad at me right now. Uh, so they ain't invite me nowhere. Okay. Matter of fact, if I get in the car with Nike, the chances are I ain't coming back home. Um, but no, this shoe. Well, then I'll have Horrible. to come along and make sure you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we both going to be there. you going to take Jared with him. All right. right. We're going to be looking for both of us. No, they're going to be looking for you. We all know how that go. Why, cool. White people get kidnapped. The whole uh, nation nah, got to go look. They ain't going to do that. This is 2021, man. It just be me and like five of my family see. members looking for me. This 2021, man. They can't do something to you and try to sell Black History Month next year. So they like, that's what they're gonna time. do. You know what they're they, gonna do? They're they gonna, gonna, they gonna get rid of me and then dedicate next year's collection yeah, <laughs> to me. Yeah, the C's collection. Yep. Man. Here's what he would have wanted. Okay. If In collaboration with Rachel and Ness. <laughs> if anything ever happened or you went MIA, the, the Slam Dunk podcast would continue. The you Slam know. Dunk podcast. It would man. be a little spinoff. Oh yeah. So we just gonna and bump the half and half podcast out the way, huh? We gonna bring that back too. Hmm. We might even like Guru. Hey, Guru, you gonna work for Dunks? Oh, who's uh, that's what it sounds like. He work, said he's gonna work, bring back the half and half work podcast with dunks. Ah, work with dunks. Okay. Yes. okay. Were you ever a guest on the half and half podcast? Never. All right. I wasn't good enough to uh, invite. At least I got that honor. Uh, I wasn't good I enough. I mean, we was we was in rotation. I, I, I good. I you were know. busy, man. Between Nike, Jordan Brand, Mitchell Ness appearances mm. in stores. I would have made time. You for was, you. Reebok. Don't forget about Reebok. I would have oh, yeah, made Reebok, time. For you. Yeah, you was. Uh, he came on. He mad at me too. He came on the last before the last episode we did. Reebok mad at you now? Well, not right now, but they were. How, how, how were you able to have a Reebok deal and a Nike deal at the same time? <laughs> Ground, uh, well, one, Ground one, breaking. breaking. <laughs> one one way is, influential. That's why you got to here's cover, one way, here's one you way to cover to a business footwear insider. That's here's why. one way to do it. You don't have one. I don't actually have. Man, stop it, bro. Coldest on, free now. agent in the game right now. <laughs> that, no, that much is true. Uh, you know what? I want to get into this stuff because we got John here. Um, it's so much stuff to get in. Uh, so this is our Ask a Lawyer segment. And so... Uh, you know, we got a lot of, um, what is it, legal sneaker stories to get into. And, you know, we can sit here and speculate all day, but I thought it was best to actually talk to a lawyer who actually knows what the hell they're talking about. A lot of the so, jargon posted is hard to make sense of or comprehend if you don't have a yep. background in law. That is. So what's up, John? How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, first and foremost, gentlemen, thank you for having me again on the show. It's always a pleasure. You are a resident lawyer, so I mean, oh, thank you. and you're doing wonders for us right now. Wink, yeah. wink. I always so. joke. Explain it. Explain <laughs> it to us as you would a child with what's going on. Okay. Uh, which uh, which topic do we want? So let's with? start off with. So we talked about the SEC and the uh, what was it? Uh, Under, Under Armour. They um, they came to some type of agreement or whatever. Uh, basically, um, for lack of a better word, Under Armour was clicking the books to make it look like they were. Yeah. So doing uh, better than what they were. From my understanding, what was happening is uh, Under Armour had a bad quarter, and so there was some creative accounting from yeah. the accountants to make it look like the quarter was better than it was. Yep. Now, the problem is, uh, you know, it's, it's okay maybe to do that accounting method with pulling forward some sales for, you know, future sales. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is they misled investors to make it look like it was other reasons for the 
uh, revenue increase. And like not, the business was booming exactly. better than what it was. And so, you know, if I'm an investor, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, these are the metrics that I'm investing on and they're looking good right now. Uh, and I'm not seeing the fact that they did some creative accounting, then I might increase my position in that portfolio. And that is where they got in trouble. So basically, it only counts on white, well, I was going to say white people, rich people. Wow. Wow. <laughs> rich people. Wow. That's, that's, that's my initial reaction. Wow. I, calm down. I, I, I fixed You said it. worse, but. I fixed it. I have said worse. <laughs> yeah. Like, calm down, everybody. But no, like, because that's the, that was my first reaction, because I was like, okay, so it's okay to cut the books as long as rich folk don't, like, get caught up in it. Well, as long as the rich people are taking advantage of the poor people. Yeah. Well, I can't believe that's the American government, isn't it? I think the American I think, dream. I think, I believe what he's saying. Am I being is too that, cynical? I know. I mean, I know. I'm being. I'm, well, I'm being well, he's cynical. Saying that they, did, they didn't disclose that. Right. I know. I know what he what means. Like, yeah, I'm just saying, saying, like, but somebody like in my position is like, okay, wait a minute, like, okay. okay. So well, the only reason this became a big issue is because investors got caught up. Well, well not even got caught up. Cause I don't think anybody got. Keep in mind that these investors are usually investing people's retirement funds. That's true. And so they have to be very per particular about what they're investing in, and they have certain criteria. So when they see a situation where maybe they have a loss and they can attribute it to this creative accounting mm -hmm. incident, then of course they're going to say, well, you know, let me, let me sue these guys and get back that money. Because right. you know, maybe for an average investor, it could be a few thousand dollars, but to a larger investor, that could be millions, millions. of dollars. Yeah. So this it's, isn't moral or ethical, but was a law broken? Uh, yeah, they brought up. I'd, ha I'd have to look at the specifics. Uh, it does appear that they did violate some duty. It was um, some act of 1938 or something that, that yeah. they referenced. I don't know if I still have well, it. What I, well, what I was going to ask is, knowing that this is dealing with business and a publicly owned company, yes. technically, but, is this something that could be a lot more common for, like, maybe you don't do it as much? Yes, Gino, this if, is very if common. If you oh, are a publicly <laughs> listed company, you are under a lot more scrutiny than just a normal privately held company. Right, uh, and so you're held to a lot higher standard, and the SEC is going to evaluate you. And if you make a representation that materially misleads investors, then you're going to get in some some trouble. Yeah. Now I got a question for you too, because when I was reading over the when we first started reading over the case, it made it sound like the SEC and the Feds were both looking at them as if they were two different entities. And so the SEC are they not under the federal jurisdiction or are they some type of sec is a security exchange commission that is a part as a branch of the federal government okay okay so yeah i mean <laughs> under armor like as at that time too because that's when they were hot and i th i think part of the motivation they had like the streak that they were trying to maintain of uh i forgot how, how, what the percent of their revenue growth was but they were trying to well, maintain the streak about it Huh? They were lying about yeah, it. Yeah, they were lying about <laughs> it and stuff. And it was crazy because I remember at that time too, everybody was like, "Oh man, Under Armour's making some moves." I think they had got, uh, um, they had some type of deal with uh, Dick Sporting Goods to, you know, uh, do sell more shoes or I forgot what the exact uh, details are. But you know, I remember it was like 2015 ish, 2016 ish, around that time where they, you know, were doing that. And you know, I remember at the time thinking like, "Okay, Under Armour making that move," and then you read this and it's like, "Oh, okay." And you know what? The short-term loss, they could have probably gotten over that a little bit better. But as soon as you put it in the framework of you intentionally defrauded investors, that makes it a lot worse. Uh, so I, I think they, the best thing to do is just be honest uh, because I think in the long run, you're not going to get away with this. There's so many eyeballs on this and so many interested yeah. parties. So. Especially nowadays, like everybody's, the way that people dig into everything um, but I guess the reason I automatically went to, you know, rich versus, well, for the lack of a better word, poor, is because the way, like, basically the punishment, they only had to pay, like, $9 million, which sounds like a lot to us, but for them, I'm pretty sure they got insurance or whatever to kind of cover most of that. Well, and the risk-benefit uh, ratio was, hey, you know, a $9 million fine, it's not that big. If we can get away with it, then, you know, what's, right. what's that? Because it's it's probably talking about influencing the stock prices by a few hundred million or even a billion right so yeah so that's i'm looking at the slap on the I'm, to me is a slap on the wrist nine million dollars and i think they were talking about going after the executives but then once they agreed to cooperate then 
all of that went away and it was just like pay this fine and that's it yeah i mean it takes years to litigate these things even mm-hmm. if you're the sec so they are going to prefer to kind of give penalties and settle it very quickly and get their terms right away and the companies usually don't want to deal with that um they you could win but the amount of work that you have to go through to win those those lawsuits is is lost the time most of the time not worth the emotional toll that it takes and it's probably just cheaper just to pay the fine then much cheaper okay um so this is interesting so puma is fighting to keep nike from owning the word footwear an article written by maya Ernest for inputmag.com puma is attempting to block nike from trademarking the term footwear which refers to trek de- trek tech driven sneakers trek tech driven sneakers although it's not clear yet which silhouettes nike wants to use the term for the brand's fly ease line utilizes its adapt technology for easy on and off access uh select models even offer 100 percent hands-free footwear uh or hands-free wear i'm sorry while other models like the adapt bb have motorized laces that are controlled via their app uh the fashion law recently reported that nike and puma appeared before the high court justice in london for an appeal hearing surrounding Nike's trademark application with the United Kingdom Intellectual Property Office for the word footwear. And it's the word, it's spelled F-O-O-T-W-A-R-E. Like hardware, footwear combined together. Uh, See. So uh, also Puma is opposing the patent and trademark here in the U.S. as well. Uh, According to Puma, because the term footwear refers to an obvious combination of the words footwear and hardware or software, the term shouldn't be exclusive to Nike as it merely refers to footwear specific hardware instead of indicating a source. In response, Nike put up receipts showcasing its array of smart running trainers, trackable trainers, smart shoes, smart football, uh, smart football boots, smart running shoes and connected footwear all pointing to the company's tech embedded shoes. Uh, this wouldn't be the first time Puma has tried to legally inhibit Nike's use of the word footwear. A uh, previous 2020 lawsuit saw the UK IPO rule in favor of Nike. Uh, while a reversal of the ruling is unlikely, Puma still remains in opposition of the tra- to the trademark uh, application in both the UK and the US. The resistance may suggest that Puma has their own tech-powered footwear on the way. I, I remember a couple of years ago, too, I remember we read about Puma coming out with a shoe that was supposed to be self-licensed, kind of like the Adapts, and then nothing else. And then this thing, you know, Nike comes out with their line. Um, but as far as this this lawsuit, at least, it seems like Puma's just trying to block Nike from getting an application. You know, I can really see Puma's argument, and I'm I'm almost basically leaning toward their argument. Maybe they're not putting it in the right framework, but the general idea with a trademark is it's a source monitoring tool. It says that the person who's selling this name or with this brand is this person, and it's yeah. nobody else. And I get to protect that because I want to invest in this logo and be able to show that um, I am servicing this type of quality of product. Uh, and you want to stop other people from doing that. So uh, one of the things with, um, with trademarks is there's a balance between free speech and being able to protect your brand for, for selling. Yeah. And so uh, shoe wear is, is a term, the, the actual spoken word, doesn't matter how you spell it, has been a, around for since shoes were around. Right. All they did here was they just changed the spelling a little bit and they're saying, well, these are for describing tech shoes. Time out. Are they trying to trademark the word footwear by itself or footwear in unison with other words. It looks like by itself. Yeah. yeah th- That's I, the way I'm getting it. That's what that, I'm getting This from is us. like when LeBron tried to trademark Taco Tuesday. Like, you just can't do that. Well, That's, That's true. Trump, but, but here's the I'm, thing, though. Taco fired? Tuesday, to uh, his Lil point. Lil Wayne tried to, to trademark uh, Bling Bling at one point. Like, but to, his, things, to his point, though, Taco Tuesday existed before LeBron. So did the word footwear, but in it's this just case, a separate, that's why I asked if there was other words. Well, in this case, the way it's phrased, footwear, like foot hardware, or foot software, that's different. So I don't know. Well, I you, think that's a stretch. When you think of shoe wear, do you think of Nike? I do, but I don't think everyone does. <laughs> not, well, necessarily. not necessarily. It's, yeah. it's a generic term. It's it's a very descriptive term. Now, they're kind of going with this nuance. Now, I mean, I can't speak to UK law, but I guess this is going on in both the U.S. and the U.K. Right. Uh, but they're usually very similar with some of the laws. Um, I, I would say that you can't rob 
society of a term to describe something. So even if they get shoe wear right now, yeah. it may become generic, uh, become a generic descriptive term in the future to describe tech-enabled shoes, like uh, Band-Aid. Band-Aid used to be a brand or a thermos, uh, but people started Kleenex. describing, yeah, people started describing other brands with that same word, and so they lost their trademarks. Uh, and I, I think that even if they get it, this is probably what's going to end up happening. So it's mm. probably, if they win, it's going to be a short-term victory. And another thing to note is, I think all of the lawyers and judges that are a part of this are, you know, very, very expensive lawyers. Yeah. Uh, and so with that, one of the angles probably they're not really thinking about is people commonly miss uh, type words. So if I accidentally type in shoe wear as shoe wear, that's protected by, by Nike, am I now accidentally creating uh, a trademark infringement issue? That's uh, true. And so I, I think that that may be one of the arguments that, that comes up in the future for it. Let's watch switching to E and R. I, so I got a question though. So it looks like Nike already won a case already in the UK. So what's the chances that that appeal reverses that decision i mean but isn't it harder hard for an to appeal say. to reverse than it is to actually get it in the first place i mean usually when you're doing an appeal you're just looking at the law not the the facts of the case are kind of what are disputed at the district court level yeah and then when you appeal it uh now the uk may do it a little differently uh but you know the u.s legal system is kind of very similar and, and based upon the the uk legal system yeah uh it's, it's possible that they'll look at the law and they'll interpret it differently and they'll say, well, we don't agree with the way that this case came out. But right. they're not really supposed to analyze the interpretation of the facts. They're supposed to see if at the, the appeal level. Of law. Yeah. They're at just the, okay. supposed to see if the application of law was, was appropriate. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing I want to go to, which is the topic du jour of the day, uh, we got this, we kind of touched on it last week. We got the cool guy. Uh, Air Jordan 1 situation where it seems like Nike got the federal trademark uh, this week. And I want to add that they trademarked it without the swoosh. Right. So it's the design. Because yeah. the swoosh already trademarked. Like That's that's already a yeah. thing. So I can see why they didn't add it on there. Um, and so... I think this is a mistake they learned from Babe. I think so, too. So my question, and, and John, you can speak to this more. I think you mentioned earlier before the show about you know something being grandfathered in. Yeah, so basically to give a little background, there's a trademark and there's trade dress, which is, is basically a trademark. That's the look and the feel of the shoe. And when I see this shoe in this certain embodiment and, and look at it, I automatically think of this particular company. Yeah. So they got the the trade, trade dress for that particular shoe. Uh, I would say that for sales that happened before then, that would otherwise be infringing on the trademark, they're in the clear. Um, but any sales that happen afterwards, uh, there you have a problem. Um, okay. I, I wouldn't want to lean too hard on the grandfathered uh, approach. I, I would do the same thing that um, this individual is doing and, and probably scrub my website and social media uh, to get rid of that. So, so let me ask you, like, why is there a point of... If the shoes are already so previous to them getting the trade dress, what will be the point of scrubbing your profile then? Because this, this all happened previous, right? Well, I mean, so. maybe you can make the argument that it's still ongoing. Uh, in French ah, okay. So. Especially if it's a pre-order with, with I know with Kai, for example, that's usually you can, the case. And like, they feel like you're continuing to market that you continue to market okay. which is now copyright infringing. Right. Now, so, I, but I, I felt like that too. Like once that trademark comes into effect. Then, like before, they couldn't get him before because you didn't own it. But prior now there to could be a nuanced rule, and I, I'd have to really go look at the case law to see if there's nothing that they can get them on for uh, the previous sales. But I'm pretty sure that they're in the clear for those sales because you know, there's no other way for them to know whether or not they would get the well, market. Check this out even if the existing stuff is grandfathered, say fine, good to go, the new stuff they're yeah. going to want to halt, stop it, uh, exactly. claim what they can. So Cool Kai, for example, he's teased at partnering with Dodge. If he moves forward with that and it infringes upon this trademark they just granted Nike, can Dodge be named in a lawsuit? Yeah, 
I mean, basically, when there's trademark infringement, they're going after everybody in the chain of the sale. Yeah, because I remember that one time Nike went out to the Cause, manufacturers. Because even if Cool Kai is right or wrong, I could see Dodge being a company that's like, we don't even want to risk this. Like, well, I can't even PR see. Honestly, I don't. I can't even see Dodge getting involved before, previous to that. Like I, I didn't say anything, but it doesn't. Because most companies don't do their homework. Not well. I'm, I, I think it was more me, so. Don't make me talk bad about Dodge on TV. I think it was more. It was more so on the apparel <laughs> side, which you know people now that companies when things are popular and trendy, they try yeah. to reach out, especially in the black community. If it was just the peril, then yeah, that's yeah, different. That's what, that's what was happening before yeah. when the Omnicat situation held in to poke fun at him and his Dodge for love for Dodge. But even still, I can't even see, honestly, I can't see Dodge. But he never, he said that was a sale. Like, he never had it for sale. He never took pre-orders for that shit. No, I'm just, just saying, like, I, I'm just, in my mind, I cannot see Dodge. Cause, I mean, he was popping to us, but on Dodge's level, you're talking like a multi-international billion dollar company. I don't know if it ever reached a radar. But then again, it could have. I don't know. Because um, I'm thinking like, yo, there's other influencers they could have tapped. <laughs> you know what I'm If they really wanted to like go African there. Like African Caesar? I mean, you know, I'll work there. No, but then or too. Or European Caesar. No, <laughs> I forgot about that. But, um, but going back, so, you know, we talked about them getting a the trade dress. But what we found out this week, so for people that don't know, so we talked about it last week, and there was a lot of information that came out after our conversation that we didn't know about. Um, one, Ami, am I saying this right? Ami, is it O M I? Yeah, Ami. Okay, Ami. He, he's we actually, don't know, but he's not relevant yet enough for us to know, so it's okay. Damn. Bro, that's that smoke. Look, damn. whatever smoke you look, look I don't. Hey, right. that jersey, yo, he Woo-hoo. boy, he's coming good. Right, you living off the uh, off of last hey, year's Pistol championship. Pete. Um, bang, bang. Sponsor, Listen, uh, mile, I like, <laughs> oh, that's what it is. <laughs> all I'm gonna say is this. All, <laughs> I'm, all I'm gonna say is this. Uh, so we we talked about the 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 beef between him and Kai last week, where Ami was gonna release the same exact shoe as Kai dropped, and I already spoke my feelings about that. But then it seems like since then we found out that the Thunderbolt that Kai has been using is actually trademarked by somebody else, and it was actually another black-owned brand, I believe. In California somewhere? Yeah, I don't I know exactly Oakland. where. Oakland. Okay, Oakland. Yeah. So, with that being said, it seemed like Ami and that particular brand are going to do something, which I thought was, hel- once again, I thought it was hilarious because I'm like, yo, like, I thought for him, for that information to come out and then for Ami to get ahead of it and to actually work with that brand, I thought, once again, was another shot to Kai this week. Kai has been taking shots all this week, and part of me feels bad for him. Honestly, I do. I feel like I feel like that would if this Nike didn't get their trademark or approved, then him doing that would have been great. But since like now you teaming up him to do what? Because which the shoe that Kai was doing that you wanted to copy can mm-hmm. no longer be made. So it's like now. But they're doing were, something else. They're doing a whole different. Show. I know, but his the main reason he reached out well, yeah, to yeah, him yeah. was because of that. But yeah. now I'm thinking, my thing is like, okay, what y'all gonna do now? So it's just like, but my thing is to someone who's looking is like, you want to start beef? I mean, a beef or whatever they got going on. It's just like, but where is? Your shoe that you made on your own. The Thunderbolt dude made his own shoe. Kai made his own shoes. Kai didn't make. Okay, see, that's I'm that's where my problem is. Manufacturing, how you want to feel like how you. No, feel no, about no, 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 no. I'm talking make. about. I'm talking about because the whole point you just saying is, you know, make your own thing. You know, you can't make the Jordan One, but it's like that's what Kai made his whole name off of was making his own. I mean, shoe. You, I feel like that's making wait, somebody else's shoe. You're. I mean. The cool Kai caught, I mean, that shoe caught your attention for his brand. But other people who, the reason why he was able to sell it, because he already had consumers with his clothing. So that's No, he was, was able talking. to, let's cut the bullshit. He, I, I mean, he was I'm able just, to sell that shoe because it looked like a Jordan I'm, 1. I'm talking about why he had it. Why I he bought had it because it. it looked There's like a Jordan 1. There's other people who got Jordan 1 shoes and they couldn't sell it either. I right. Sold it too, he, was, like he was prolific one. at it. He was better. Like, he was a better. Listen, there's some people who can steal good and some people that, you know, get caught all the time. But it takes they're a combination all, both of that. At the end of the day, there's no honor amongst thieves. At the end of the day, they both get caught, right? They both go into jail. I'm saying, like, what I'm saying is. So he was a better, he was better at pushing his bootleg product than other people who had bootleg product. I'm not about to sit up here. Like, I just don't understand how somebody could sit sit there and defend Kai in that situation and then look down at Ami. They both was doing bullshit. No, 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 so, I mean. My, here's my thing. He he didn't do that until he had a problem with it. That's when he went and got it. To me, it don't matter. So, Kai no, no, said no, no, you no. can't call it, it is, blue magic. Clout, because you can't say, they like. They're all okay, doing it for clout. 
Why are we acting like nobody? Why are we acting? First of all, why are we acting like Kaya's doing this for some type of no, chivalrous no, no, no. Here's, here's, here's reason? My, what, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. I said he made the. I said manufacturing the shoes. And yeah. we're not, I'm not saying that like he that was his original design. I'm saying yeah. old boy from Oakland with the Thunderbolt. He was already making shoes, right? Yeah. Kai was manufacturing shoes. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have no shoes prior to his his mm -hmm. interaction or his issues with Kai. So now you want to go. Only reason why you making a shoe is because your issues with Kai. Because what did you sell on your shirts? I'm still your shoe i'm stealing x y and z but can i tell you something so, i saw this coming a mile i'm telling you when i there were, and i wish he could have been on the show because uh, uh fbcc bay area you know i talked to him a lot i was actually the one that actually gave them the heads up because i didn't know kai right like mm -hmm. i didn't you know i don't talk to this dude but i know d did mm -hmm. so i reached out to d like look i'm hearing this i know they got a hard on for this dude they want him bad mm -hmm. Get him a heads up. D reached out to him. They had whatever conversation they had. D posted it. You can check it out on his uh, Instagram. <clears throat> I saw this coming a mile away. And I even said to somebody, I, probably to D or somebody else, watch somebody take this dude's shoe, just to prove a point, take this dude's shoe and make it. And he ain't going to be able to do shit about it because he don't own the trademark. He don't own the shoe. Well, no, at the time, nobody owned the shoe. But and like, he ain't going to be able to say nothing. And it's sure as shit, for whatever his reasons were, whatever Ami's reasons were, Ami did exactly what I thought somebody was going to end up doing. It was like, I'm going to make your exact same shoe, do something about it. Yeah, they went back and forth with the Instagram post, but Instagram post ain't the same as punches. I ain't really paying attention to that shit. <clears throat> Long story short, Nike gets the redress or a trade tra dress or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And so now everybody got to clean up shop. And that's my whole point. So that was my whole point. If, if Kai was creating other shoes... I would support it, and I'd be like, yo, like, first, Nike wouldn't come after him. But the fact that all you did was just come out with an Air Jordan 1 and put Kai on there, or whatever your name is on there, and the Thunderbolt, which, once again, wasn't yours. So you stole so you stole the Air Jordan 1. You stole somebody else's logo. Like, what did you create? Uh, I think it says Air Revs somewhere on the box. I saw, but here's my... And that was another thing somebody brought up. Here like, the fact that you're using Air Rev is still a play off of the Air Nike or the Air Jordan thing. I think or Nike French Air thing. for Dream. Okay, whatever. So, so, but. You're still using the air thing, and you ain't even got air technology in your shoe. So that's a, to me, it's I an obvious. Didn't, I didn't know that. I just assumed maybe that it was in there. Right, that was somebody else pointed out to me, and I don't know if that means anything, the fact that he's using oh, air wow, the same way that Nike does. I mean, I mean, and he doesn't he actually had, have air if technology. If he put that in there, then he would have been got a long time that ago. That could be misleading marketing if people would associate that as a so let me ask, and, and can you answer this, too? Because I think a lot of people have the impression that because Nike didn't sue him like immediately the day after, uh, the shoe came out that they can't sue him or that they're not doing the due diligence. A lot of times it takes a couple of years for la for companies to kind of react well, to some things, I mean, right? They're not going to do it the day after. Um, they probably found out that they got the trademark. Just no, I'm talking about as far as them seeing this other person making their shoe with another logo and using like the air you know the well that the, was what he was air. saying that was grass yeah, like he uh, can't go they can't go back i mean they're though. not gonna do it the same to him. day they're yeah. probably no i'm gonna... talking about as far as them reacting because a lot of people saying like well they ain't go after him when he did this but it's like for a company as big as nike first of all they're going to do their, their due diligence they're going to move slowly when it comes to certain things yeah some things they pounce on and other things look at this like t spare do, me the do we have clarification on if cool kai applied for and or received or was granted a trademark no, we do know because first of all, we couldn't. You get, he couldn't have gotten a trademark. He could, there's no way he can get the trademark if it's already trademarked. Yeah. Okay. Now, there am is, I right in that? There is a possibility that he may have an argument that even though they're looking kind of similar, that the Nike trade dress trademark is very narrow, and that this particular his particular shoe is different. No, I'm talking about the logo. He had a Thunderbolt logo, but, but another can company. Nike's newly appointed trademark contradict an existing one. Uh, I mean, it is possible. Uh, what what will typically sometimes okay for a trademark, you can have um, kind of uh, common law trademarks, but usually those are very local. So he may be able to sell, um, and I, I'd have to do a little bit more clarification on this. So you know, you have to take. There's something the similar going on with Kanye West and Walmart right now. I don't know if you guys saw. They're using. Let me finish. Let me finish. This one yeah. point though. Let me finish. Go ahead. But yeah, he, he might be able to have that trademark, but only for a very, very local area where he was selling. Right. So like so, like you might see like A1 point. Mechanic. Obviously, there's A1 Sauce, but you know, because the mechanic shop is like just in your neighborhood, you know, like A1 is not going to sue them 
to well, change their name, right? I forgot what the name of it was, but in East Lansing or Lansing, there is a pizza shop that was there before the chain Gumbies. came in. Is that is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. And so Pokey what sticks. happened is the chain filed the trademark, but since this uh, pizza shop was already there um, and operating, they got a common law trademark. And so now that chain can't operate in that particular area of sale. And they can't sell pokey sticks anymore. But the thing is, since this chain has basically gone ahead and trademarked that name, now that small uh, small pizza place can't go ahead and... They're confined, another, basically. Yeah, they can't, to, yeah they're confined. Yeah. They can't open up a restaurant with the right, same right, name right. somewhere else. And so Nike, now that Nike got this, this trade dress, so that means going forward... Basically, every you know that's going to be problems for everybody else. But I was speaking more so to, you know, if Nike wanted to make the argument, like, okay, like we might be able to go after you as far as like the silhouette, but like the branding, like using the Wings logo that the the Jordan used, or uh, using Air Kai instead of Air Jordan or Nike Air, like, can they kind of make an argument? It, it depends on how strong the trademark is too. Different okay. trademarks have different levels of strength. Yeah. So the stronger, like, the, and more unique and fanciful the name, the more powerful it's going to be. Yeah. But if the term is kind of a little bit more on the generic side, or it's just like suggestive. Yeah. Or even borderline. But if you're using it on a product that's basically ripped off from theirs, like I, it's it's different. I guess if you're just going around just saying it, but I guess if you're coming out with a Nike product or a well, a Nike the, ripoff, the and then you're is, using the same branding. The test. Well, you could sue anyone for anything. But yeah. in, terms America. Of, in terms of winning in court, <laughs> uh, the question is going to be, what is the likelihood of confusion? Are you really confusing people? Yeah. Uh, when you see I don't think anybody's confused. Yeah. So if, it's, if, it's, if you can show evidence of confusion, then you're going to see a lawsuit. Okay. Interesting. This is why it's good to have a lawyer in, in the house. I'm still just waiting for the cool Kai Jeff Staple collab. You know what's happening. <laughs> you know what's happening. War, Warren Lotus. Warren, Warren Lotus. Warren Lotus as well. Yes. It's gonna be a, a three-way collab. This is about to be the the <laughs> slam. <laughs> it's gonna be like the Megazord of all bootlegs. Like this is like all, it's like Captain Planet. Like so, all all three bootlegs combined. combined. Huh? Uh, jinx. No, I'm just saying. It's just to me, like I said, like I get that there is nuance to this, but at the end of the day, one bootleg versus another bootleg, I could care less about who wins. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, they both bootlegs. So. Um, I, people brought it up on social media about the bape as well too. It's just like, like you you. Yeah, do you know the details about the bape situation? Um, maybe you're gonna have to. Well, give bape me some too, context. just like he did with the Jordan One. They did with the Air Force One back. This in was like years ago. Like, Different silhouette. Yeah, but they, they used a yeah. star. They used a star bolt instead of the Nike swoosh, but everything else is the same. Yeah. But my thing is that goes back to like what I felt like protect everything like you didn't you like you didn't have an Air Force One trademark right you mm -hmm. went and got you went and, I mean the Jordan one you went and got one to stop mm -hmm. it like they were doing it go get your Air Force One trademark so you can stop it right now I think what so it that's happened, what I was like, keep your same energy with everybody but that's what I'm saying but, but no, is they it, filed is, it incorrectly or and they had to go back and redo it or they, is, is the situation the same? That's what I'm saying. Like, well, how, this, they, they both made bootleg of, they took Nike silhouettes. But Nike legally, modified. is it the same, though? That's yeah, what I'm saying, I'm because talking, there's a right? reason. When he did it, they didn't have a trademark. When Babe did it, they didn't have a trademark. When Kai started selling and they started getting on the radar, Nike went and But that I'm saying is there might be other information legally that we don't know about. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, I would like to think that Nike would have went out. Like, Nike goes after everybody. So I don't uh, see why. Don't there has there. to be a reason. For me and my mind, Nike going to get their bread. Like, Nike ain't about to just sit back and let you eat but off But here's of them. my thing with Babe, though. I felt like if they didn't go after them, because they might have left the door open for a collaboration down the road. So like I think that's possibly why I don't they didn't know about that one. Like, I, I think because if, because they they are big like they are big brand. So like they him, collab with Adidas all the yeah, time. So too. so it's just like that's what no I they think do they, that. But I mean Adidas. I mean they they also did collab they have with a Parlay. collaboration with Converse. Still cool. McCartney gets shoes all day. They, so they, I, no, they did they did with Champion. They did with Coach. Like they, my like point they is should. my point is I, I I see why it's easy to sit Reebok, there and think probably. that there's that Nike scared to go off the bait or they're just choosing not to go off the bait. But I have to believe that there is some type of legal hurdle 
that is preventing them from going up to bait. Like just knowing just Nike and watching how they filed, move. I don't think they filed their trademark properly, and they're worried about opening the floodgates to more. That's what I'm leaning towards. I don't know if you have any. And I feel like with the Jordan trademark or the Dunk trademark, ten fifteen years later, that's why they're so. My, how, how can about you? It. My thing is, how can you if you did it incorrectly, you go back to do it correctly? How would that open the floodgates if you're trying to right your wrong? I mean, wrong. You know, right your wrong. And that's where John comes well, in. Well, I mean, in terms of patents, at least. If you get a patent, you're not you don't really know if you've got a good patent until it goes under litigation. Yeah. And uh, I feel like an analogy can probably be made for the trademark business. If you have a trademark, you ne don't necessarily know the strength of it maybe until the uh, litigation goes into place. So that could be one of the calculations that they're making. Uh, it could be that maybe they want to create a friendly atmosphere. It could be one of a million reasons. Uh, generally speaking, though, uh, you're almost obligated to kind of uh, make sure that your trademark is being protected. Yeah. Uh, because as soon as you let other people start uh, infringing on it, even in a small amount, it weakens the trademark, and then you can lose. You have the uh, possibility of losing the trademark and having it become a generic term. Because like from what I'm, from what I gather from talking to people, uh, it's, it's closer to what Dunks is saying. I don't know the specifics, but. They're scared of losing the case and setting the precedents. I mean, that's possible. I'd have to actually take a closer look at those uh, next to each other to see if see if there's anything that comes to my attention. Yeah. Um, but, but my thing is, why would you be scared if, like, you could say, we'll roll with that. You were scared before. But now that you've seen that you can win your trademark dressing, why would, what, what make you be scared now? After that, this Jordan 1 showed you what was things to come. So after but I... But that's what I'm saying. Like, we're assuming that... It, we're assuming that the legalities are the exact same for each shoe. Yes, it's both Nike shoes, but the situational situations make make things murky. I mean, you can talk to yeah, this. I, I mean, I'm speaking in generalities. Uh, yeah. A lot of the times, there's a lot of nuances that right. go into these different case by case um, basis. Yeah. And so, what may look very similar in terms of like a, a lawsuit on the surface, yeah, there may be some deeper legal reason or strategic right. reason why they chose to choose this battle versus that. Because just looking at Nike's track record, they sue everybody, so it's like there has to be a reason that I'll they're choosing it, not my, to my sue them. My thing is, why if you sue that company, who's a bigger company, who could you got more money? Like my thing right now. It looks like you got the loan law. It's like all these people are wrong, right? right. From Bake down to everybody, right? Yeah. You go after the small guys, but you leave the bigger people like Bake hanging. So what's going to happen is Kai going to say, you but know what? But they sue bigger companies. They sue Sketchers. They sue I mean, Puma. They, they sue. Because they, 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 I'm saying they rival them. But my thing is, these, here's my thing, is people that they will possibly collaborate with, right? The people like Bake they've collaborated with before. When mm -hmm. I feel like, just throwing paint on the wall, they leaving that door open for that. Because on top of that, Here's my thing. Kai I hate the say, fact that you put me Kai in the position. Or Omni can say, you know what? Cool. I won't make Jordans, but I make Air Force Ones because we'll trade my dress for that. I'm gonna tell you this right now off the bat. And I hate the fact that you put me in the position to defend Nike. Nike does not give a fuck about collaborating with Babe to the point where they allow they're going to well, allow so them here's to my thing. Go after them then. I'm, that's what I'm telling you. There's something that I'm saying is easy to sit there and say, like he just said. There might there, be some. There's a legal reason. There's a legal reason it. why. Like my, so, conjecture is not a. a, a that, that's not an so exp explanation. So my, here's my thing. Babe's also in a country that's not so easy to protect intellectual property. That could be a lot to do with it. And that's another world. thing too. So yeah. that's they what I'm saying. That Chinese company that made fake Jordans and look how but look long, it long it took, took. So and look how much money they got from it. But come on, Babe been doing this since '05. That's 16 so years. Who, once again, but, so who's to say that they haven't tried to go after Bape already? Who, because, that's another thing, too. Because another it, thing is Bape, Bape sold ownership a bit ago. Mm, you know, it's like... Yeah. All I'm saying is, look at Nike's track record. They have shown they do, for the on a pretty good basis, go after people when they feel like they got to protect. The whole reason the Converse went after people when they did is... Because they got with Nike, and that's when they went after everybody's heads for going uh, for making their, uh, their own versions of the uh, Chuck Taylor. So I'm looking at Nike's track record. Nike does not give a shit about having a collaborate because Nike's attitude is we're Nike, we're doing you a favor. But yes, like we can work together as far as making collaboration, but Nike looks at that collaboration as them being one and y'all being two. You know what I'm saying? No matter who they're collaborating with. This Even is why us. they was, this is why they let Kanye walk. This is why they want to let Drake walk. This is Nike has this arrogance about them. Now we might say, like, no, you might need Kanye, but that doesn't mean that Nike sees it that way. So, point is, looking at Nike's track record, 
looking at how they operate, there has to be some type of reason that we don't know about that they ain't go out to bait. To suggest that they're just choosing not to go out to bait because they want to possibly do a collaboration. No, that I'm collaboration saying, ain't going to do enough for them. No, no, here's my thing, yeah, though. No. Like, you have, you have every legal right to do so. Even when they're But we're assuming that. Or do I'm, we know that or do we so, assume so that? I'm saying we're going about... We just this case showed me like okay you you showed me the Warren Lotus I'm saying you did it with Warren Lotus in here but right? that's my point you're but missing are, the point but those are those two, are two, two different cases, cases but those are two cases in America also who oh. that's the other part like, but here's my that hasn't stopped them from well, suing overseas though no that hasn't but I'm, I'm saying fine. is is you can look at the situation and say okay I can see the similarities mm -hmm. what I'm saying is there might be some differences that we don't know about Babe could have won cases in the past that can't be overturned. These yeah. are all fresh, and Nike's learned from their mistakes, and they're going above and beyond to do it properly. That's what I'm saying. Like, That's it might be something that we don't know well, about, okay. which, I, which is what I would believe. Here's my thing, though, right? You can't get them for the past stuff, right? Do it now so they can't so continue to do it because they they trying to they bringing out like different versions of that base so they trying to bring. This is why I so said it must be something that we don't know the about. Skate stir, the road stir, babes changing it up. Yeah, it, the but that's what I'm saying. Like this it, is so. why I believe it's something that we don't know about because I know. From what I've seen, Nike would love to go after bait, but they, some, for whatever reason, legalities. Once again, we could look at the Warren Lotus situation. We could look at the Kai situation and see the similarities, but there's some hidden differences there legally that allows them to go after these two and not after them. Well, let me ask you a question. When you're looking and you're comparing these two shoes, are you easily confused that this could be a Nike shoe, the bait? The bait? Oh yeah, most yeah, like yeah. At, at first glance, you could Back be like, "Oh in shit!" Two thousand seven, like for yeah, the yeah, for as, sure. As, sure as a consumer, as just a regular yeah. everyday consumer, yes. oh yeah, yes. yeah. Now the next question is: Do they have the proper protections on that specific design where it is unique to Nike? At well, the time, even I don't if they, they did, did. Eagle sold Bape. So no, they don't have the trademark. At the sold. time, I don't think Nike had the the trademark or the patent. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on the details, but from what I can remember i want to say they didn't which allowed bape to kind of flourish and do what they did okay so then it it sounds like they didn't have any legal protection for that that particular shoe yeah bape came in they made the same shoe and now and might have even done it so the, that's the same thing was the kayak situation yeah. jordan nike didn't have the trademark dresser for the jordan one so he made it now nike has it now they went and applied it and got it now he has it so now going forward he can't make or sell that shoe you know it, it could so be that there's what, such a nuance on that particular trade dress that um the slight differences could make a difference in right. terms of whether because you talk versus. about when you talk about law i mean when you're lawyers you would know when you talk about law like it's so much legalese so like the slightest difference can make the biggest difference yeah am i i, I, I mean in my view, probably would have happened is Nike files this trademark uh, trade dress application. Yeah. And then you get these office actions where they're like, well, you know, there's this shoe over here. It looks pretty much exactly the same. And then Nike's like, no, no, no. These are the differences here that that we're not trying to say we're we're protecting. So you, you really have to go into the weeds to really know what the legal differences are. Mm, yep. and, and that's just a kind of an off the cuff type of response to the situation. Without digging further into it, I'm, I can really only conjecture. Um, Bape and Nego are also based out of another country when they originated. They sold to another company that's also based out of the country. And I mean, they're a financial powerhouse that has backing far beyond any of these little guys that Nike's recently that's, been going that, after. That's, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Also too though, that if, could be no, another matter, no matter the nuances, if you're a company, you go to whatever lens to protect your trademark and protect your product, correct? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, within reason. I mean, you don't want to yeah. overreach because that's just. Oh, no, no. This is not an overreach. Like, yeah. you look at the shoe, like, okay, it clearly copied. No, right? he's saying legally. That's what I'm saying. You keep looking at the shoe and saying, oh, well, it's the same thing. It's not the same thing because. Well, like I said, you can look at the car and say, okay, they took the Jordan 1. No, we're talking about they the Air Force, Force 1. That's what I'm saying. They 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 took, they the what you're saying the is, you know, once, the upon a time, once upon a time, there was fake babes far more rampant than there were fake Air Force 1s. Right. So my point is, you're looking at it like, okay, he made a fake Air Jordan, he made a fake Air Force 1. Go after him the same way you did. No, but no, there's we're, differences. Even remove the car in the Warren Lotus, right? Which is what? Forget the, the names. Force, I didn't even say that. I said he's made, he stole a shoe, he stole a shoe. You're saying, go after this person the same way. We remove Quiet and Warren Lotus from it. 
You have Air Force One. They have a base. So they copied it. You don't own it. You didn't have it. Now and you've seen how fake. That, 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 that's no, exactly no, no, what no, I was no, just saying. saying. That's I'm really what he was saying. No, I'm saying. Go, I'm not saying. For all the my thing is, don't tell me like there's, oh, there's something legal over here. We don't know. Like you, you, whatever, like he said, whatever lengths it takes, and they got the money and the resources to go to protect your but he just said that. It depends. The Air Force One may have been filed improperly, and that's why there's That's why you're saying it depends. Yeah, they're, they're, you're literally just saying what I was about to say. No, I'm saying what, what You're I'm saying, saying go after everybody the same way. Yes, and I said remove that situation. What they're I'm not saying, neglecting the Air Force One intellectual property that fucked it up at some point and learned from their mistakes and don't want to do but it. But my again. thing is, where is that paperwork at saying that they filed it? If that was the case, we would have be able to look up the Air Force One trademark dresser and see how it is. But when you're talking about, all I'm saying is when you're talking about legalities, right? You can sit there and look at the similarities, but as you deep dive into the situation, but there what, are differences. There are differences thing, though, that if legally... There, if there was a trademark dresser file, right? Yeah. And we can say, if it was filed incorrectly, we can say, here's a trademark dresser. But we're assuming. Protects. Dunks isn't saying that's a for sure thing. He's just okay, saying... Okay, well, so that's what I'm saying. We are you assuming and I'm assuming. So well, basically, heard, you say you want heard. receipts. You know, yeah, that's if what it was you filed saying. incorrectly, show me because... You want receipts. Because they could take you to court and say, look, it doesn't protect this, 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 this. I just gossip on sneaker Twitter, and this is like a theory I heard. So I, like, if, if I was to make a conjecture, I would say... It's not that they filed it incorrectly. It's that they filed it so narrowly that it doesn't really have. It's just almost like the a teeth to bite. It doesn't have any teeth. That's, yeah, that's probably what's going on here. Like I said, like I mean, you know what, what I, I just randomly thought about that could be interesting. Air Force One's actually have has air in there, right? Yeah. What if Bait did? What if? What if it was filed the without? Argument, yeah. yeah, like without air. Like, like I said, just, no looking, at, just looking at the track record. To me, without knowing all the details, because like I said, we can look at the surface level similarities and say, okay, well, go after this person the same way. But to me, there's an obvious reason why they're not. What it is, I don't know. But looking, like I said, looking at Nike's track record and how they go after everybody, it's hard for me to believe that they're not going up the bait just because they choose not to. There has to be some type of legal reason that is preventing them from going off the bait. Let me ask you this. If you file a trademark dresser and you want to go up and update it to cover more, can you do that? I mean, yeah, you can, you can file multiple trademarks. But can trade you dress. amend an existing one, I think he's saying? Um, I mean, you basically would essentially refile it. Refile a new one, yeah. Right. The same effect. But that might be a reason why they can't. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's a Just, reason why so they we can't. we both don't. Like, there's things where we have a legitimate questions about, like, you don't know So about you really legitimate. believe that Nike is choosing not to go after bait? So my, my thing is, my th forget the bait. Why don't you re, like I said, reapply if you felt like it was too But that's narrow. what we're talking about, though. Yeah. But he, they chose not having not to. How long the Air Force One been on? How long so that's, they what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm asking. You're saying that they're choosing no, not to. Yes, no, they're not. If someone's copying all of my products. I would say that's ridiculous. How's that ridiculous when they haven't, though? The way they have what? They haven't refiled it. They haven't made no amendments to the the current. Because one. once they again, see people faking and knocking off Guru, that's what. Once again, I'm gonna say this slower. There is a legal reason. There you is don't a know legal the legal reason. reason though. So how can you say <laughs> that's my reason is wrong? Like, you're, but we're both using Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me let me fire this arrow. I know we got a guess. Let me fire this arrow. Let me go. I'm putting the microphone. I'm using reasonable conjecture, based on the evidence we have at hand, not what I think. Not what I assume. What I'm saying, say, based on Nike's track record, they uh -huh. sue everybody, right? Uh -huh. So there has to be a reason why they're not. But I don't believe that they're choosing not to sue bait. Here's my thing, though. But you, no. what the argument was, or the supporting facts was, there's something legally with the, how the trademark was patented or anything like that. No, that's what that's, he's saying. I don't a, know what the legal thing is. Source. I'm just saying, from a Nike standpoint, there has to be a reason. There's no... Like all the all the thoughts that have been offered up, like they possibly want to do a collab later on. Oh, that's all bullshit. Like I said, talking well, to people at Nike. Neither one of us is there at the table to know, though. Like, so just like you offer an opinion on it, but so okay, I'm, but so there's I'm, but so there's, there's, there's opinions. The legal, there's opinions like based on fact, and then there's opinions. There's just our, our opinions. So you and were so, part of the legal meeting? Huh? There's a simple term no. known as strong. I talk about hold on, hold on, weak hold on, hold on. It, hold on, no, no. My point is, my point is, I actually talk to more people. I know more people. I know more stuff going on behind the scenes, not just shit I see on social media. So when I say there's a legal reason, which is what I heard from many people, and like I said, there's a track record. Look it up. Sneaker <coughs> law firm on facts. Instagram uses the terms strong and weak trademarks. And yeah, maybe and that's what I'm saying. This is why we brought a lawyer. Trademark. But my point is, well, that's what he was saying earlier. Yeah. 
Right. That's exactly but here's what my we thing. Saying I also and so you can also if your trademark was weak or like you really don't know how strong your trademark is until somebody tests it, right? Until someone tried to copy. But I'm not even saying that's the basis. No, no, I'm saying. So I'm saying. Well, here's my thing is if once you found out it was weak or it wasn't right or it didn't cover, like I asked them, you can go and make amendments to it or you can go update. If that's the case, it. then yeah, I agree with you. But I'm right. saying we don't know if that's the case. Read this post. Okay. So, the, so that's what I'm saying. So I think it's foolish based on somebody's track record. Like if you show up every day to work and then all of a sudden you don't show up to work, it'd be foolish to me just being like, well, Guru didn't show up because he smoked crack. Well, we're going to just run hey, to like, I'm still you know here. what I'm saying? We gonna just make up, we're just going to make up reasons why Guru didn't show up. He shows up every day. It could be an emergency. It could be something going on with his family. So since we don't know, let's look at his track record and say, you know what? It must be. An, I'm going to lean towards emergency because Guru always shows up. His track record dictates that. So Nike sues everybody, and then all of a sudden they're not suing this person. To me, that says there's some type of legalese that's preventing them from doing it, and not just them being like, well, fuck it, I don't want to sue Bape because I want to come up with that dope-ass Bape collab next year. Team that's Slam not Slam Dunk well, is doing live research. <laughs> Another thing to take into consideration is that when you're looking at the trade dress that they were granted, you're probably looking at the pictures in that particular trade dress grant. Right. But it's really the legal description that's the law. Right. That, that's what confines everything. So you may see something in the picture, but when you actually read the legal description of what it's describing, yeah. what it's owning, that could be so narrow that it's basically not uh, going to create an infringement scenario. Right. I mean, we're going right. through that now. Like, look he forward to that, like, next year or two years from now. But we're going through that now. Like, you know, you got to look up this. First of all, you got to look up to see if the trademark exists. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. And this is why. People tell you whenever you go get a trademark, you do anything legal, it's better to have a lawyer because things can get cloudy, things can get murky. The law is confusing for a reason. Post. Huh? I mean, I mean, looking at it, it looks like they do, like Nike does have a trade dress. But for that's, that's what I'm saying. Like that's one. On sign, that's but what is that? Let me see the um the profile. That's that that's basically reading that they uh, right. Oh yeah, shout to Sneaker Law Firm. They shoot uh they sued Yums. Yeah. When Yums oh, they lost making, that. Well, they didn't lose it. They they no, negotiated. they did lose that fight. They did lose that. As a matter of fact, I got that here. Well, I was reading through it. It says here that they negotiated kind of like an agreement with Yums, so that they wouldn't actually lose it. So they to didn't lose the trade. Well, they yeah, they probably I'm settled. To it. Yeah, which is probably well, what's the, the same as which is probably thing. exactly what DM happened with Bay. That's what I'm, it might be. Yeah, that's what that, I'm saying. But like, all I'm saying happened. is I'm not gonna offer up any answers. But looking at once again, looking at past history. Right, because that's the only way we can look at this is looking at past history, being like, okay, you know what? If they've been known to protect their trademark or protect their whatever for years, then it's reasonable to assume that they're not just choosing to not sue this person. That it must be some type of legality preventing them from doing it. So, so. they went after Youngs, right? What year is that? They said oh oh eight. So that was yeah. Bate was been doing that, right? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is it basically it said in that in that uh, uh in that post got it in here that too. they had um they they had the trade the dress post. and they had went after them. Y'all want me to get into uh, it? You said what now? I said I mean I, I swear I got well, it. Well, I, 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 I talk about it. Okay. Um, but no, they they basically settled. They mm. they they settled an agreement because Nike there did not want to risk losing it because apparently there are some legalities that they, where they could lose it. Oh, I got the article right here, so we can go into the detail. So an article written by Maya Ernest for InputMag.com. Shout out to Input Mag, by the way. Yum's a colorful sneaker and accessory brand is relaunching after surviving a multi-year battle with Nike to celebrate. Yum's is re-releasing its signature Sweet Series sneakers uh, made up of four limited edition sneaker designs, all inspired by treats as sweet as Yum's court verdict. Wow, it is funny because I think even when I was reading this, I was like, yo, somebody paid for this article. But anyway, uh, YUMS, an acronym for You Understand My Style, was an or was originally <laughs> right. I didn't know that. Was originally <laughs> was originally founded in 2007 by street artist Tex Moten as the designer and chief creative officer. Tex brought details like translucent soles and graffiti art to sneakers, drawing inspiration from his favorite food and snacks. The success of Yums led to Nike to take notice of the brand and follow suit against them. You guys have a collab them. coming up? Who Yums? <laughs> Shout out. Let's hope so. You know uh, his style. The success of Yums uh, take uh, filed a lawsuit against them in 2009 for design similarities. Uh, with the lawsuit spanning several years, it was eventually taken to the Supreme Court, which resulted in Nike's first ever covenant not to sue. What's a covenant not to sue? Uh, sometimes you can make an agreement between different companies like who have similar names or the same name yeah. and say, well, 
I won't sue you if you just stick with this specific type of thing, like belts. And I won't sue you if you're just selling shoes. Right. And so that okay. is just an agreement between these two companies. Uh, few brands survive such a legal feat. Nike is notorious for defending, defend, once again, Nike is notorious for defending the sneaker designs as evident uh, the lawsuit against people like Warren Lotus. Uh, Nike even went as far as to additionally sue the manufacturer that worked with Warren. In the case of Nike v. Young's, La La Factory. Young's admitted to drawing inspiration from the fashion industry's most loved trends along with a few special ingredients. Uh, but the same could be said of popular street brand A Bathing Ape, who Nike has never sued despite the obvious resemblance. The Bapester, a reimagining of the Air Force One Low, has been around since 2002. Its prominent place its prominent place in streetwear history, as well as Bape's notoriety, may be one of the reasons Nike has never touched the silhouette. Young's, on the other hand, doesn't hold the same status as a brand like Bape, making its survival in court that much more monumental. The Young Sweet Series sneakers are available now in unisex sizes, ranging from 5 to a size 13. You can find them at yumslife.com. So they had a covenant. So basically, they settled, like you said. Yeah, basically, they came up with some type of agreement. Right. Um, and so. I don't even know what Young's look like. Can we pull up a picture of a Young? No. I always want to see what a Young no, look like. because it remind me of everything Soulja Boy sounds? used to wear. <laughs> I just want to see what Young's look like. You remember how Soulja Boy used to dress? Just, just picture yeah, that. Yeah, fucking awesome. Oh, I don't know why, wow. but every time I think of every time I think of him, I want to think of Flavor Flav. So I, I can't. They look similar. <laughs> like they dress. So that, so that article like right that. there cited both of our points that we were stating while we were on. But it was nothing. Fact, all it said was that they didn't sue. And they're come, And once again, they're basically coming up with reasons. They didn't say this is the reason. They're just saying... No, no, no. Well, the point... Well, I'm saying... I'm saying not... Saying they brought up the... Yeah, everybody yeah, but, brings up the BAPE. I would bring up the BAPE, I'm saying, too. But you're saying they went after the smaller companies, but BAPE is a bigger company they knew that had fear of what? No, they said BAPE has more of a... Uh, the shoe itself actually has more prominence in streetwear history and all uh, that other shit. So the brand itself no, it was ain't much bigger. No, about, about it said, uh Popular streetwear brand, Bathing Ape, who Nike has never sued. The Bapester, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Uh, it's been around since 2002. It's prominent place in streetwear history as well as Bape's notoriety. And you say shit about the size that? of the brand. Maybe one of the reasons. Maybe, maybe <laughs> one of the reasons Nike has never touched the silhouette. So once again, they're speculating. And nobody's saying that this is the reason. But uh, what well, we, you just... <laughs> They also said that Nike is notorious for defending the sneaker designs, which is what I Except said earlier. Except when it comes to bigger brands. Which is bigger brands like who? They've sued bigger brands. No, I'm saying Warren Lotus, the what's the name? If y'all, y'all, y'all argument can't first. be, your argument can't be they can't scared of suing bigger brands when they sue bigger brands. I'm talking about on this, on this, on this. It co- doesn't it matter. Suing is suing. Or the joint, probably. Whatever. Suing is suing. Like you don't just sue a bigger brand just because. No, like, you no, sued you, a bigger brand for the same reason you sued Yums. You st- that's my point. You sue big brands, you sue small well, brands. Yeah, absolutely. So why all of a sudden, so you can't say that they don't sue bait because they're a bigger brand when they sue bigger brands than bait. But for the same thing. That's why I said facts. Like Lotus That's did, like me though. saying you scared of ducks that, when that you is, fought. That is facts, though. They that's not facts. Everybody that's else facts. is That's like saying feminist. you scared to fight ducks, but you fought Shaq. Like, that don't make no sense. I'll take Shaq, too. Who <laughs> took his jersey? <laughs> But if you, if I agreed to fight Shaq and yeah, Conor McGregor, not a free to Dunks, you would think that. Like if you fight Dunks and you fought Shaq, and then all of a sudden you want to fight Dunks, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna assume never fought, never fought Dunks. So if I agree to saying, fight Shaq, no, what I'm saying is, oh parking lot. Goodness, what I'm saying is, if you <laughs> fought Shaq, <laughs> and if you fought Shaq, somebody's bigger. If you fought Gino, somebody's smaller. I'm not gonna run to the first thing. Oh, he must be scared of Dunks. What makes me think that you're scared of Dunks? Dunks is fucking crazy. Right. You fought somebody bigger, you fought somebody smaller. So but, it can't be the fact that he's bigger. But, uh, if you talked about my mama, if you like, well, he's bigger than Gino. You talked about my mama and I fought you. He talked about my mama and I fought him. He talked about my mama and I didn't fight him. You would bring up the same reason. No, I wouldn't. I'm like, I wouldn't say, okay, well, you scared of fighting him because he's bigger or he's smaller. No, no, no. You say the reason. Like, hold on. I talked about your mama. We squared off. Gino talked about your mama. I would want to know why. Okay. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't sit there and say you were scared of him because he was bigger or smaller. If you're we're saying on the same team, if you're saying, if you're saying <laughs> that they're scared go, of man. suing bait when they've sued bigger go. companies, that makes absolutely no sense <clears throat> to me. None. They sue bigger people, so therefore it can't be the size of the company that is preventing them but from suing. I, my thing is, that you continue. To Puma sue has people. better lawyers than bait. I guarantee you, Skechers has better lawyers than bait. We so know, you, Skechers gets everybody. away with murder. They do. The point so, is, I mean, they literally almost at, kill kids. Actually, <laughs> here's the point. They had they settled that, yeah. which would be even more of a reason why if I'm Nike, I don't go after here's my thing, though. for that. Here's I my thing: say. that one thing that probably when they went that and they 
was probably how they sell that because they found out what some of the things in their trademarks didn't cover some of the things that young can get away with right so to say they like okay we'll negotiate with you what you did took what they learned from that meeting what what young's got away with and refile their patents so it can cover those things. Okay, Young got through. We used them for a test run to cover what we missed and didn't miss in our trademark. Hold on, I don't know whose Reapply comment that was so that just came up there. I mean, but not necessarily because the one thing that was said in their, in their agreement was that uh, basically what John said, like the covenant agreement is basically saying that, hey, you can only make this. You can't make X, Y, and Z. So maybe part of the agreement was, hey, look, you can make a shoe that looks like an Air Force One because people are still going to identify with it as an Air Force One. So we'll still get... You know the credibility for it. Can we bring up the last comment because there because once again the only so the, art, the article did Jordan, the article did touch on both <laughs> things, but right? once again, but they didn't lose that. Oh, so no, 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 no. I'm saying we're not saying the same reason. What's the comment? That that it says the article said both arguments. That's the, what I said. No, I agree. The article said both com arguments, but I would say the only factual thing because the second part was speculation because they said this may be why Nike didn't do it. As far as Nike defending, they have a track record. That's something you can look up. That's something factual. Like speculating as far as why they're not, there's nobody knows. So therefore, it's all speculation and conjecture. Therefore, nobody really knows. The only thing that we do know is how defensive Nike gets over their shit. And so, based on the only fact that we do know, I'm looking at this Bape situation like, okay, while I don't know why they're not going up to Bape, what I can say is, since Nike goes after everybody legally, there must be something legally. Just like I gave the analogy, if. You are notorious for not showing up on time, but Guru is. But then all of a sudden, Guru is showing up late. I'm not going to speculate any negative reason why Guru showed up late. I'm going to be like, you know what? It might be some type of emergency. Now, if you came in and said it was some type of emergency, I'm going to look at your track record. Well, you always show up late. Is it always an emergency when you show up? I'm going to assume, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Guru before I give it to you. Because he has a track record of showing up on time. So when he doesn't show up on time, that's out of character. You showing up late all the time is in character. So you show up late, I'm not going to give you the benefit of the doubt of an emergency. So with Nike, because they have a track record, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that says, you know what, legally it must be something that prevents them from doing it. I'm not going to sit up and speak. It could be, I mean, we can come out the ass with a whole bunch of reasons. I mean, shit, the Italian mob well, <laughs> is preventing Nike from fucking suing. Well, let me, let me ask John this. If they had a covenant agreement with Yums, on that particular this shoe. biblical, by the way. It does. <laughs> <laughs> they had an agreement for that particular shoe. And that shoe was basically the Air Force One. Could they then actually go back and resubmit for trade dress to try and cover anything that they may have missed before they had that agreement with Yums? Oh, well, shit. that's where we're saying you can't amend it, but you could apply for a new one. Right? Well, what would they be able to? Uh, so you're saying that if they have this covenant, then that would... Can can you just restate the question? So so they 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 had the <laughs> <laughs> they had the, the agreement with Yums, basically you know hey I hate that name by the way hey the, hey you can make the shoe basically right okay would they then be able to reapply for a new trade dress that basically with a new trade with them applying for a new trade dress would it somewhat like alter that agreement that they have with Yums to protect them from the future. In terms of uh, anybody else trying to steal their designs. Okay, Sounds let's say, greasy. Let's say that Nike has this deal with uh, Yums. And then Nike goes ahead, or whatever shoe company, and they file a trade dress for something that's covered by the agreement. Then I would say that that agreement, the Yums or whatever company, would bring that agreement to court and try to enforce it. Uh, and then basically stop them from Lord. doing that. I Which don't think Nike's out here doing people like Which that favor. could be another I, I reason, you know, like they're No, that's what I'm saying. Like they not. They're well, going that, to defend well, themselves when they can. That's what I was saying would <laughs> be maybe that could be the reason why that could be another reason why maybe they haven't chose to go after I would Bay love because I, they can't because of a reason like that because they've settled an agreement with another company. Are these things made public? Like the actual arguments being made in court and stuff? Okay, so the arguments made in court are, are generally public. Uh, if there's some type of agreement, then that not necessarily will be public. Damn. Uh, depending on the, you know, nature yeah. of the agreement. I would love to know what um, was said. I would, I would say that they probably don't have some type of agreement. And if, if they did, it was probably about different categories within clothing. Not necessarily different nuances between shoes. Because why would you limit yourself? If you're Nike, there's there's no, I don't see there's any reason. They'd rather just solve this in court. So looking at this to kind of put this thing in the ball, looking at the the thing with Youngs, is does it look more like Nike didn't want to take the official L and just say, okay, let's, 
we're going to just settle as opposed to continuing on and taking the official L well, I mean, court. it could have been the other company that wanted to settle, and then they came up with some type of agreement. Uh, I, I think that this is probably the situation also with the little Nas X shoe, the Satan shoe. Is you know they must have realized. Oh, they got over on that. They must have realized that there's no way that they're going to win this. Uh, Nike would have pursued it to the end, so it must have been the other side that was the one who said, "Hey, okay, let's uh, let's make a deal." No, I think they got over on that one in the case of Lil Nas X because I think they were supposed to return the shoes, which we all know nobody's going to return the shoes because the shoes are way worth way more than what you pay for. Yeah, and that's kind of like you know, <laughs> so, an empty. That's kind of a, yeah, that was kind of a win win for like, everybody. Hey, sorry guys, we won't do it again. We're going to stop right now and we won't distribute any more shoes. Right. Well, and I think to make the courts happy, they said like if you want a refund, return them and we'll process it. If no one <laughs> yeah, chose okay. to. Well, the key, <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> right. The key <laughs> language they use if anyone was confused about this shoe being from Nike then you know you can go back so that it comes down to the confusion uh, that's the that's wording what, is everything yeah and we got our uh, Rocky on the on the line all right so let's get this moving on good debate I love you guru um we're good man Y'all gotta continue that one though. Can we do that? No, we'll, we'll, we'll finish in the car. Um, we- <laughs> pause. Whoa, yeah. Yeah, pause. Damn. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, yeah. No. Dwight didn't even say no. nothing. He's just shaking his no. head like, no. Dwight looks so no. disappointed. I'm disappointed in no. myself, Dwight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, America. I didn't, y'all know what I meant. Gene rubbing off on you. Uh, oh, I ain't been pause. No rubbing. Pause. <laughs> 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 Especially at the last week, you know, yeah. those, uh, those Jordan ones you was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, we got our special guest, Rocky Parrish. She is the owner and CEO of Rock Deep. Um, what's up, Rock? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Whoa. Oh, my God. Something's going on. We're getting some feedback. We good? Yeah, you got the volume. Yeah, that's better. You got headphones? Oh my! You got headphones, Rock. I would, t- I would turn his volume down. Okay, well, while we's getting set up with that, um, there are a couple other news stories I want to talk about. This is hilarious to kind of lighten the mood. So Nike, <laughs> we always talk about this, right? How they don't do their research with certain things, um, like how they came up with the backwards Puerto Rican flag one year. It was something else that they did, but Nike, you know, it's funny. Like them Using being the, the post office logo, <laughs> they're the number well, one. That, that got settled too. They're the number one brand in the world, but sometimes they do things that just make you question, like how uh, Nike celebrates Greek goddess of victory, but misspells their own name. Now, the <laughs> the company for those that don't, you know, it's an article. We'll go over it. an article written by. I'm about to butcher this guy's name. Oh, shit. You know, an article written on the GreekReporter.com. Nike, whose brand name derives from the Greek goddess of the same name, meaning victory, uh, celebrated the goddess by releasing a pair of Air Force Ones. Now, as the article said already, Nike got his name from the Greek goddess. Is it Nike? How is it pronounced, really? Is it Nike, Nike, whatever? It's, it's based, the swoosh is based on her wings and whatnot. And so... Um, Nike is literally based on like Greek mythology in some way. Anyway, Nike recently released images of the shoe, but Greek speakers were quick to spot that at the heel of the left sneaker, an inscription in Greek, which was apparently supposed to read Nike Air, was misspelled. Many were left wondering: Is this was this a colossal mistake or a made-up word that just looks Greek for marketing purposes? Uh, some people took to social media to complain about the obvious blunder. Uh, is there any way you can pull up that shoe? The uh, it's the Greek Air Force One. While he's looking that up, there's a Greek skate shop. Uh, I forgot the name. Color something that just designed a high top dunk, and it's one of the worst SBs I've ever seen. It's based off like a kebab. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Ugh, coming gross. soon. Uh, da, 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 where are we at? It's bad things coming out of Greece, huh? Uh, so it's some common, people bro. went to social media to complain. Others, uh, like this one lady named Angie Exitus. Uh, started a petition to keep Nike from releasing the sneakers. She said, currently the sneakers spell picks and not Nike. 
This is cultural appropriation. We are asking Nike to preserve and respect Greek culture and history by accurately using the Greek alphabet when writing and referring to the goddess Nike. Uh, this snafu comes on the heels of Nike earlier this year, terminating the contract with retailers in Greece. A spokesperson at the Nike Dutch European HQ confirmed that Nike strategy in Greece will involve a smaller number of partners. The spokesperson also added that the decision was taken in the context of their consumer direct acceleration strategy, which involves prioritizing investment through Nike's digital channels, basically direct to consumer. It's, it's everywhere now. Uh, Nike has established 22 Nike stores in Greece, 15 of which were managed by Foley Foley uh, or Folly Foley, a Greek based international company whose founder was jailed pending trial, accused of falsifying the company's financial data. He must have come from Under Armour. Uh, these contracts are expiring <laughs> since the company is unable to obtain protection from creditors following the financial scandal. So I don't know if you can find the shoe yet, but it seems like what some designer at Nike thought was you could just take Greek font and just spell Nike the same way, but in Greek, Nike is spelled differently. So there you go. So you see the shoe. So on the left shoe, you see is N-I-K-E. Right. Yeah, like that's a sigma at the end where they probably think it's like an E or epsilon or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you but in Greek it's N I K and then it's like a it's like an N looking or an H looking letter. Right. That would sound like an S. Okay. Right. Versus an E. That right. Was terrible. I was so, gonna say, can we just start at the fact that the shoes are just awful? So first that's true. That song is yeah. I don't know what the hell. <clears throat> I guess that's supposed to mimic the the wings of it or whatever. It looks, Man, look, it looks some dumb. ideas are good ideas, but they should just be it's good in theory. Ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jeremy Scott somewhere laughing. <laughs> oh, apparently Man, that, looks the, re- he, that looks really familiar. He got his he got his deal with Adidas back. They're supposed to be re-releasing some Jeremy Scotts. Oh, oh lord, wings, bones, all that. So Doug Staples, you have a chance. Look, so basically, <laughs> <laughs> so here's my problem with that shoot. Like you're a company whose identity is derived from the Greek goddess Nike. You mean to tell me that you're coming out with a shoe to pay homage to that and you couldn't do your due diligence? I see both sides of this, and they, they fucked up and need to correct it. But what would actually look like Nike, mm-hmm. what would actually sound like Nike would not look like the English Nike. But that's the point, though. And the, no, I'm me, saying the designer made a mistake, but there's no way they thought that was correct. They had to have known. I'm pretty sure somebody at Nike was that just it. cosmetically looks like Nike. It just doesn't sound I'm like. I'm pretty Nike. sure somebody at Nike went, That's what was in a Greek, I mean, fraternity or sorority, so they know some of the Thank letters you. and spellings. Like you knew what like, Iota that, Capt is right, Sigma is wrong. The first I'm, one I don't even I'm know. not even. But yeah. here's my thing, though. I'm not even surprised because look how they do, uh, how they, they do some of the issues that they came across with other collections, <laughs> like history, Puerto Rican. Like one hundred percent. It was only one collection that didn't. Well, they got kind of messed up, but no, they, they fixed they, it. They ain't messed it up since. That that, that, but, that be true collection. Yeah. They seem to hit on every every yeah, time. Yeah. They now. had one small issue with yeah. the triangle, whatever. But they, they fixed, fixed that, that and, yeah. and it's been spotless. I ever forgot since. about that issue. But they've been spotless ever since. But it's just some things. It's just like you have so, to. No, I ain't mean to cut you off. We just gotta respect it. To your point, this goes back to what we were talking about storytelling. When you were just just rushing designs out there just to pump product out you're going to have issues like this and like i said it's not a big issue it's just this goes to what i be saying all the time is that nike is the number one brand in the world but sometimes they make some of the dumbest mistakes mistakes where you're like how like this is so easy to avoid right if you're going to base a shoe off of the greek goddess nike and you're going to spell your name i would think somebody was like you know just as a reference how do you spell nike in greek so you can tell that story, properly tell that story. So even if people don't know, you know what we're going to say? What is this? And then you can tell them. You can tell them. That is, that's what storytelling is, right? You put Nike in Greek. People don't know what it is. They're either going to look it up or they're going to ask the question. And then I allow somebody to tell that story for Nike because Lord knows Nike's not going to tell it. So, <laughs> I mean, we say this. I'm, I'm almost like I feel like I'm just beat. Like the horse ain't even there no more. I'm just beating the the imprint of the horse in the ground at this point because it's just once again if you actually cared about storytelling you would avoid mishaps like this uh american versus i can't read that that's too small american for like US, US, brand. Brand. us brand with ancient greek <laughs> we all saw remedial <laughs> ancient greek gr name manufactured in china cn and distributed globally nationally symbols mean a lot to people they do they do and it was funny because my initial reaction when i saw somebody created it uh 
uh, what did they create? A petition online? My initial reaction was like, oh my God, another petition. But then I thought about, and then Guru kind of touched on it, where if this was a Black History Month collection and they didn't get something right, that they could have easily... This speaks to the level of care and effort that I always talk about. Because if you actually... You don't even care about telling your own story, because Lord knows you're not going to tell somebody else's story right. So... I guess you just have to put it when we say Nike, it's more so who was involved in this project, who okayed yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's what we mean by when we say Nike. So we don't want somebody in football or soccer to be held accountable for a footwear to you know. One hundred percent. But it's but just, you know it's a rep. When you have people working for you, they become a representation. Like when we say something on the show, they might say Guru, they might say C, they might say Gino, but most people are gonna <clears> say <throat> what they said on the sneaker box, Dunks. They might, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're going to say. Felt left out there, huh? They're going to say the sneaker box said. Welcome to being black. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we look at this shoe. Y'all <laughs> 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 out of control. Just to my mind, not my heart, does. <laughs> but, when, you know, we're looking at this shoe, and I agree with you. Like, you know, it sucks that, like, all of Nike is going to get shit for this because, you know, it was just one design team who fucked up, not the entire company. But this does speak to a larger problem about storytelling because. Like I said, this is your own story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is I your mean, own but story. How, how hard is it to do checks and balances? A simple before, Google search. Before it even goes into production. Because me, me, if I'm making a shoe, first of all, I would get rid of that tongue. That tongue would not exist in the shoe. But beyond that, if I was a part of that design team, I'd be like, okay, well, how do you spell Nike in Greek? I would have looked that up. I would have came across, because I, I mean, I'm not walking around with that knowledge, right? But I would look it up. Somebody just thought, hey, we can just use Greek font and <laughs> spell it the exact same way as if it's... And it's like, no. Like, first of all, the Greek didn't speak English, so why would they spell in the English... <laughs> Any... <laughs> Dog, like, you would th- that would be my first thing. Like, but you, you, got, you got to understand, like, the person who was over this project, who was the senior vice president or whoever okayed the release of the shoe, when they looked at it, and they was like, oh, Nike on the back. Like, from them, <laughs> right. this way, but this is where it comes into being aware of culture and even not even other cultures but just of your company's origin of his name and everything like that you be like okay oh nike how do you spell oh did we spell this right but you're looking at it from a person who's assessing it you gotta look from a guy say okay this shoe's nice it's white okay got the wings on the tongue or oh, say nike in the back okay that looks dope let's release it not being cognizant of the culture that's what happens when you don't respect other people's culture you just look at product by itself yep. like that's what you have to say when you make a Martin Luther king shoe was this okay? Did we find okay about his family estate? Is everything spelled correctly? Like, like the same initiative they took with the Atlanta Hawks jersey with that MLK stuff. You have to take that with everything that you're not a part of. But when you've made so much money, if you become of it, you think that okay, this is what it is, or they'll get it. Like, yep. No, you know what I'm saying. Yep. You can't be. You can't be that. Because, and my thing is, you could have had some. You you had offices over there. Hey. Sending this shoe. Is everything correct on the shoe? Is it, are we disrespecting or leaning about anything out of Greek culture? Are we like you could have did that? Time right. Is that shoe already out? Has it been released? I think it's supposed to be coming out. I don't so know if it's hopefully there's yet. still time. Like hopefully they're listening. I mean they already. I mean the shoes are already made. I mean I'm pretty sure they're still going to drop them. There goes some know. resale value for you. There you All go. Right, I got to get a pair. <laughs> but no, I mean it, it's and like I said, I don't want to make a, a mountain out of a molehill. But like I said, I think this is just a microcosm of a bigger issue that we've always talked about, and that's. Doing your due diligence, avoiding the dumb mistakes that you can easily avoid. You're the number one brand in the world, and sometimes y'all act like the number five brand in the world with shit like this. Like I expect to see some shit like that from Under Armour. Sorry, Under Armour, but still, you know what I'm saying? Like it. But Under Armour ain't gonna do no great shoes. They ain't gonna do. They gonna do some time breaks. They're gonna, right. all, they gonna make some ghetto shoes. If that's all accurate, though, we should cut. They gonna make some to, some ghetto shoes, huh? If that's accurate, we should cut back to um the interview. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Is Rocky there? If not, we can just get them next week. Hey, hey, Rocky. What's up? Whoa. Still, we still got that volume. I would turn volume down on his end. Yeah. Can you turn the volume down on your end? Can you still hear us? Huh? I love doing a live show. It's so awesome. Nah, it's it got an echo. We're gonna have to figure this out. Rock. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. 
Yep, cool. Okay, we we got we on we on okay, we cooking now. What's up? Nah, man, it's all good. I've been wanting to get you on the show for a while now. You know, we, we've been talking for a minute. Um, and, you know, with you being one of the uh, few black creators in the space as far as footwear, definitely wanted to, you know, have have you on our show and, uh, you know, let people uh, at least get people up to speed on other options out there. Because we always talk about the big brands. Like we just got to talk about Nike and uh, Adidas and stuff. But there's a lot of brands doing some dope shit, too, like you and others. Um, and so, uh, f are you listening to the conversation? What'd you think? Yeah, man, it's <laughs> like I said, like, I don't think it's going to be one thing that drops Nike. I think it's going to be a death by a thousand cuts. I think it's going to be a bunch of small things that bring them down if they go down. But um, anyway, uh, well, before we get into your brand, I, I, we talked about this earlier because, you know, a, a lot of uh, a lot of talk now is about uh, creators and you got a lot of brands out here who are creators and then there's people who are um recreating for a lack of a better word and so i don't know i mean i guess specifically we could talk about like the cool kai thing and you know uh like what's your thoughts on that as a creator yourself so, um for me i mean we you know like i, I don't really like to t count anybody else's money but it's coming to, even today you know um him still telling people he's shipping their stuff and people are doing it even knowing the patent laws that happen uh with the Nike's off the patent law, uh, trade press and everything. I just think it's kind of silly for him to keep going and doing that. Um, cause my, Nike don't mess around. And while we all want to be independent, put little fingers up, you know, the big machine, we still got to do our thing. And I think if we were all just creative in our own rights, we would, we wouldn't even have to, to deal with that. I mean, me, myself, you know, people think this is the 270, uh, outsole. Uh, and we use it on a lot of our things, but I had to rebuild that. I don't use the same tension as Nike. I don't have to worry about those type of things. So um, there's a creative way to do things. It takes a little bit of money, but I mean, just to avoid all that bullshit, just create. Don't, I mean, and 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 reimagine, if you will. So right I'm now, I'm gonna jack this and then slap my logo on it and, and call it mine. Right now, I guess that was the point I was trying to make because, like I said, there's a lot of creators such as yourself, FPCC Bay Area. Uh, I can't think. Oh, man, I had to top my head to the brand that's out in Oakland that we mentioned earlier. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of brands out there, black or otherwise, that are doing, like you said, doing some creative stuff. Um, but more about you, though. Um, so, uh, first things first, I didn't know you grew up in a military family. There's yeah. one that grew up in a military family myself. Yeah, yeah, two military parents, both army. Um, my brother went into the military, and he's kind of he kind of confused by that. He's like, we raised when we got raised. Because I tell people all the time, I served eighteen years living at home. That was all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at you, man. Like that was that was like you said, that was the biggest deterrent for me. Because I'm like, if the military is anything close to what it was like you know, being at home, why would I sign up for that? So, um, you grew up in Mississippi, right? No, I was born in Mississippi. I, I call it my hometown. Um, oh, you grew up in Virginia. Uh, but I grew up for the most part after my parents, you know, uh, both retired uh, in Virginia and PC County. But I say I grew up in, in Virginia, but PC County Bay. Uh, we, we fought most of you couldn't wear pink shirts when you moved to uh, Maryland. So, uh, you need to, you need, you know, of course, I was licensed, so I had to fight all the time. Wow. <laughs> I was just about to ask you, like, what was the racial dynamics and did that have any influence on, like, how you do business now? Um, what was my racial dynamics in high school? Like, growing up, I mean, in Virginia, it was pretty mixed. But when you go to Maryland, you know, um, the white folks are the minority, the women are the minority. So, I'm from Virginia. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you get messed with more as a black man in Virginia. That's, that's for sure. So, uh, hey, can y'all go get my daughter? I'm sorry, this always happens. Anytime I'm talking, I'm going into conversations. So. But anyway, um, Virginia, you know, Virginia is a good spot to do business because you know, I both, both Virginia and Maryland, but I've them all. 
pandemic happened, but we're still driving, we're still moving, we're still pushing. And uh, I, I don't let something like a pandemic slow me down. Right, right. Oh, that pandemic hurt a lot of people. So, I mean, so the pandemic didn't affect you? Oh, it affected us by closing stores because that's revenue. But right. um, when you're creative, you are always creating and thinking of ways to survive and hustle because, you know, uh, I didn't know what I was when I was younger, you know, flipping down laters and reselling them and stuff like that. But we just call ourselves hustlers because we, we needed money. We always needed money. So, um, and, you know, you have to feed seven kids and put the kids to college. You learn that you know, just because people ain't buying sneakers at the time, you need to find out something else. So we moved to PPE, we sold masks, we sold gloves, we sold all types of things. And uh, we actually had that as a side business now because we did a lot of, you know, we actually networked. Because, you know, my past life was doing contracts and, you know, having done a television and radio, I never, I didn't burn many bridges. As long as I did, I blew up. But um, you, you use all those networks to kind of do what you're doing now and push forward. I mean, you know, we, we, we all are doing something else. This is just what I'm now writing off into the sense of doing for a Most definitely. So speak, kind of playing off that hustle thing, because I, I guess I heard a story about you used to flip candy at school and you would hire other students to sell it for you. Yeah, because, um, you know, <laughs> I like comic books when I was little. I love, you know, shoes. But my parents were poor. So, you know, it's crazy to find out when you get older that your parents were in the military and they were on food stamps. So you don't know that you're poor back then. You just know your parents aren't giving you the money that you want. Um, you know, just like punishment, you know, white folks got that option. You, you got both punishment and your ass. Here. But to the story, you know, <laughs> we're actually hire uh, other kids to sell candy at lunchtime and stuff like that so that I can make even more money. And uh, <laughs> my teacher said, you know, I was causing a disturbance, which I really ultimately wasn't. But uh, when she called my father, you know, which obviously scared me to death because my father would put my ass in front of everybody's shoe if I called the bucket. He actually, and it surprised me, he said, you know, is my is, is my child distracting the classroom? And she said no. But you know the kids are doing this. And he goes, well, I guess you need to talk to the other parents' kids, not or the other kids' parents, <laughs> not me. You wasting my time. And I swear to God, that day I was getting asked in, in front of everybody, the principal. Just I thought they were calling assembly just so he could whoop my ass. But he surprised me, and um, but they still broke up my my cartel at that time, so I had to figure out something. Else. <laughs> it's weird having it's weird hearing a twelve year old had a cartel, but. Shout out to you, though. Um, I, <laughs> um, so you started off as a contract specialist for the federal government. Then you started your own business called Rip Solutions Consulting, uh, which mm -hmm. allowed you to get more involved in the marketing and management side of things. How vital was mm -hmm. that uh, experience when it came to you starting Rock Deep? Negotiation, just know, you know, the basics of running a business. Uh, I mean, I think when you're a hustler, you basically, you know, and I, I, hate, to, I hate to compare it to, like, street stuff but if you know how to run and, and manage and, and lead when you when you finally become official all you have to do is get the paperwork done. everything else is easy uh, right. you know taking care of treating people right and doing the right thing you know I mean, I've, I've, I've obviously run into obstacles along the way but when you have done all those things all your life and, and, and doing marketing and management consulting and making other people money at some point I just decided you know, while I was always making good money I wanted to do what I needed or I wanted it right and are you true too because like as you say that like i i think about like uh we had kareem biz on the show uh i think about jay-z and so you can see how like to your point where you know if you are able to hone those skills in the streets all you to become official all you need is the paperwork and you see what they did yeah. i mean that's the best yeah. example of um taking that skill set and uh applying it to official business and i hate saying it like that but i mean i guess that is what it is official business but it, it's it's the same as everything else you know you complain about how rich folks do things about how they're able to save you know they don't have to pay taxes or you know all these kinds of things but my whole thing is we all want to be rich in some capacity it's just what we're doing back to our communities but it's all about playing the same game everybody else is to do what they're doing what they're doing if it's not illegal then you can do the same thing both do it i mean why complain if you, if you can do that too no, I one hundred percent agree. Um, even though you know, I some of some, I, I look at it like this. He's he's distracting me. I just want to know is that a is that a is that a real white dude rapper dude? Like I, I, I feel like I rap. <laughs> that's dumb. <laughs> that's. <laughs> that's the, the, <laughs> 
<laughs> that shout out to Dunks. That's Dunks right there. Oh, man. Guru that, actually hey. left. Guru, Guru, <laughs> Guru, left, right Guru left the building. Guru left. <laughs> he left the building. Like, I'm watching Guru as he he's literally left the building. He left. He's gone. Um, nah, wow. Yo, if I was 5'3", I'd have tried to, like, cut me, but... I ain't gonna do that to the only white dude on the dance. Nah, Dunks. Actually, I mean, shout out to Dunks. He's uh, what did we say last week? He brought the color barrier on the show. He did. He is our. He's not our Jackie okay. Robinson. He's our who? Uh, oh first, man, who did we say that he who was? Would he be? For like a okay, so because I can't think about else, let's just say Jackie Robinson for today. He's our Jackie Robinson. He was like a, a white running back. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy! I can't even think of the last time I even heard that name, man. We man, we going deep into sports right now, but no, Dunks is actually, uh, man, he's he's actually proving himself valuable on the show, and uh, he gets a lot of shit, but you know, he's he's family. content creator of sorts that just wants to, you know, teamwork makes a dream work, and yeah, yeah. gotta be all right, huh? If he can take everything, I'm sure you all give him. He's got to be an IG. He's still here, man. After oh, how many yeah. shows you been on here? Thank uh, you. I came in around episode two fifty ish, maybe. Was a little... it? It seems longer than that. I was gonna say, I feel like he's been here for about a year and a half now, right? Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, yeah he's been. Well, remember, I mean, we didn't we didn't record doing. He stayed longer than Rocky did. Oh, okay, here goes Rocky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, but no, Dunks is still here. I mean, he gets a lot of grief, but you know, it's all a lot of love. At least in our end, I can't speak for other people. But I keep moving forward. He does. He does. <laughs> Shout out to Dunks. Um, but no, so speaking to the line, because I saw you recently had Anthony Anderson. Like shot yeah, you out so, or something. Yeah, so he um you know, sometimes we just shoot our shot when possible and sometimes before I go to bed, I I'm I'm not able to do stuff during the day, so I have my social media manager to try to handle people cold, uh questions and stuff like that for the social media. But at night, you know, before I go to bed, I like to scour see the comments for like and I'll just check out other people's pages. And he was work, he was playing, uh, he was working out or something. I was like, hey man, y'all need some black on niggas or blackish. And he said, you are now followed, I'm hit you up. And 10 minutes later, he did me and they go back to production and uh, in August. So uh, we're gonna see what's going on with that. I mean, I'm working on a lot of collaborations presently, so I'm looking forward to that one, actually most specifically. Oh, okay, so you're gonna get your own show? Rockish. No, I just, I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done with that TV <laughs> But if you, if you give us some shine on there, I'm sure we could uh, do a little bump in our rating. No. Nah. I, hope, I hope, man. I'm telling you, I wish nothing but the best on that end. Uh, you also got the Wu-Tang collab going on too, right? Yeah, that's an expensive one. Um, if I could just get one of them to actually uh, pub it on their own thing, it is unreal. But, uh, I mean, we're still doing all right as far as uh, sales go. But let me tell you, getting that license thing is no joke at all. I bet. I bet. Like, I mean, like, is that the most difficult part of doing collaborations? Is getting the licensing? It just depends on who you're doing it with. Because since they're, uh, Prison is a very hard person to go to. Actually, spoke personally to Papadonna. And um, if you guys have seen the, uh, the uh, doc- several documentaries they've had, there's this whole thing because Rizza and his brother um, own the own the uh, Lutan logo, but everybody else wants to be paid from it, and everybody else has their own version of the Lutan logo. Um, oh, I didn't wow. realize exactly that when Adidas did their collaboration, they called it the Wu Tang collab, but it was actually Wu Tang. I mean, it was actually Method Man. It was ugly ass shoes, but it was still, you know, it was Method Man uh, collaboration. I didn't even know that. Uh, so, yeah. like, how involved are they in the design process? Uh, not at all. I mean, when you when you pay for your licensing, yeah, you can only hope at that point that somebody says, "Hey, man, we want to help be a part of this," but I haven't heard from one soul yet, uh, other than Capadonna, should I say. And Capadonna, he explained the uh, the politics to go into it, uh, but he, he he wanted to talk more about just more the Capadonna line, which I'm still open to, but there's more of a story to tell uh, when doing the, uh, the full Wu-Tang. Right. So as a black creative, you know, especially independent and you try to make a name for yourself and whatnot, um, like what are the hurdles you see as far as in the sneaker industry? Obviously, you got to go against the bigger brands, but like what are the – other hurdles that you face as an independent, uh, black-owned, uh, creative uh, that you face? Black people? No, I'm joking. But, like, <laughs> 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 I, mean, I, think, I think, and I joke half-heartedly about it, but the whole thing is that, you know, we've been, we, 
been conditioned to think that it's Nike, Addy, or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got a few folks, and I, and I speak collectively on that, but, you know, they, they see an independent doing something, like, oh, well, this, you know, because if I put a solution on half the shit I did, everybody be all on top of it. But that's not, what for me, what it's about. I don't right. want to look like Nike, I want to appear like Nike or Adidas. Uh, but the fact is, I know I'm, I'm killing it in my own right. But some of the obstacles, you know, just for any entrepreneur is always capital. Uh, but I've done well in my life in other uh, industries where I, I I can put the money that I need to in certain things. Uh, but I have to have my own budget as well. But when it comes to people understanding the product, I just need to get it on the table. Okay? As I tell everybody, as, a, as an independent, if my shoes look good, they have to feel good. So I build my shoes from the inside out. Right. If any of you guys put on, and it didn't feel good the first time, you're not coming back and talk shit on your show about me, all that. But if it feels good, you're going to come back. But you'll give Nike and others, if the shoe is a shitty shoe, a different, you know, another opportunity. But you're not right. giving an independent value. That's true. Um, so speaking on that, like, cause I remember a conversation we had about, cause you remember last year, Black Lives Matter, that was popping and all these brands made all these promises to do better when it came to their involvement in the black community. And we talked about, I don't know, I don't know if you can go into any detail and I apologize if I'm bringing it up, if you didn't want me to, but you know, some of the, uh, dealings you had as far as them wanting basically we say this a lot on the show too like they want black faces but not black voices correct and so yeah. like i don't know if you could speak to that I, well, I don't mind at all um for me uh I'm, i can't i can't be afraid to speak on my experiences i don't want to put people on point street but the problem is that everybody wants that face but they want to control what that face does and says and i have to give the benefit to some who reached out to me that we still have some things in in, in the works with others, they just want to say, well, at least we tried. Because I believe some intention would reach out to black independents and say, hey, we want to do some business with you. But then know that, hey, well, we can only pay you this much for that shoe. You got to be able to walk away. Because they, they they want to depend on the des- desperateness of maybe a company. Yeah. I'd walk away and say, well, I'm not giving you this shoe for $25 a year. I mean, I know for a fact that you're paying more for some of these Nikes and Adidas in your store. You want to tell me I got I got to pay you? Are you gonna pay me twenty five dollars? You got you got a uh, target at Amazon and Walmart. You gonna tell me what you gonna pay for my shoe? So right. I'll just do what I'm doing and, and walk away. No, nah, and shout out to you, man, because it takes a lot to even, you know, because like you said, a lot of these brands, a lot like these uh, big retailers, they will take advantage of the desperateness, as you said. Uh, because a lot of people, you know, they want their product in store and it looks good, you know, saying that your product is at, for lack of a better name, Macy's or, you know, Foot Locker or whatever. And so it looks good, you know, there's a level of uh, validity to that, you know what I'm saying? If you have a product and now it's at Foot Locker or Macy's and whatnot. And so a lot of people will sacrifice, you know, they'll cut that deal. And so, you know, it's, it's cool to hear a brand like you say, you know what, no, you're going to pay me what I'm worth. And, you know, and I think... Uh, it takes it takes it takes platforms like you all actually letting others know it's okay to buy independence because if you know every right. podcast out there all they're doing because they think they're going to get free stuff from Nike and Adidas. I've been there. I know everybody just wants free ass because they think that you know that's the pinnacle. That you know, and I'm gonna, look. I was there once. I was a brand. I was a brand little person too. But I realized there's a better way to do things. And you know, I know what they're doing to folks. I know that they give you less quality once it goes through sportswear, once they register something. Yet yep. you pay more every time it re releases. But people want to have that Nike chance on their face all the time, thinking it's doing something for them. And look, I don't I don't say, I don't fault people for doing what they want and buying what they want. But when it comes specifically to my people and I've and I've shown these examples that they think of us in a particular way, no matter what we do, they know we're gonna go to them and they think of us in a particular way and Sometimes you look like a clown going back to the people who look like look at you like you're a clown. Facts. I can't yeah. even. I feel like you're talking to me right now. Uh, but no, it's Directly funny. At you. But speaking, I, I do want to piggyback on what you said because you you are right. They, you know, a lot of people do stuff for free product, and even in the past, I've been guilty of this too. And but then you get to a point where like the free product isn't enough. Like to kind of speak on the situation recently where, you know, I was getting product and that was cool, but I said beforehand, like, look, if this, if you guys think this is going to get me to change the way we do the show and how we talk about things, then I'd rather not go this route. And I was told, no, no, we want to work with you. We like what you guys are doing. And then as soon as we 
kept it consistent. <laughs> you know, deal we did. You know, kept it real on the show. Then it was like, oh, well, we're not going to give you any product anymore. And I was okay with that because I wasn't necessarily. I felt good in the fact initially that I was able to speak my mind and we was able to do the show uh, with integrity. And I was still getting free product because we've seen a lot of people. Uh, me and Guru travel a lot, um, and we ran into a lot of people. We've seen people go out their way to tap dance to some degree to get that free product or to get those invites and whatnot. And it can be alluring because you you know you kind of be like, damn, we could be there had we just played the game. And but you know, I it's, value integrity. It's selling your soul. I mean, look, I can't fault anybody for wanting to get free product, but what if that free product bringing you is not? Helping you know, you can get content, but there's other ways to get that same product that Nike can give you because exactly. once you network and you get out there, you find folks from the swoosh in Beaverton that will slide it to you anyway. Yeah, you know, right. The person who for Jordan, you know, Reggie. When Reggie sent you, don't you don't reach out to Reggie, Reggie reaches out to you. Yeah, but when you go to all <laughs> these people, will they will say, Hey man, I'm gonna give you a card, I got you. Because the, the, the worst thing you can do. Is asked. The best thing you can do, especially for a person who's like me, is is turn down free stuff. Why? Because you get more of it. Yep. No, nah, that's true. I'm gonna try that next time if I ever get another chance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, like, but you know, notes. but yeah, but so you know, I, I get what you're saying. Like, I mean, there's the infamous New York situation that we talked about. Guru knows what I'm talking about. Space Jam. 2016. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so we've seen it happen and it can be frustrating because, like I said, you know, you want to be able to work with the brands like, you know, I look at somebody like Jumpman Bostic who has been, you know, faithful to Jordan Brand. I mean, since literally the beginning and he can't even get a shout out on Twitter. Meanwhile, you know, some some YouTuber can throw a bitch fit on Twitter and he's getting free product. So it can be frustrating. But at the same time, I like you said, I value having my soul and having integrity. And so, therefore, I'm okay when we don't get those special invites when, you know, I don't get certain product or whatever. And, um, and so, no. One, it, thing it, one thing we'll do, we'll always try to do and attempt to do is control the message about the brand and the product. Yep. And if they think somebody's going in a little bit too hard on them, they, they, the threat is stopping the product. Yep. And if you stop the product, then that means, oh, well, they'll stop talking about them, you know, in such a way. But for me... My, my, my soul, my integrity means way more than a pair of goddamn shoes. Even yeah. ones that are. You know what once I mean? people. So, go ahead. I was going to say, once people realize that I'm bought and they can't trust what we say on the show, then I mean, we might as well stop doing the show at that point. You know? Right. And so. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, so, you know, like when I got the stuff, we still. I mean, and Guru knows this, and I don't know if he remembers, but we were supposed to go when we went to Nike in 2018. Mm -hmm. Who do we have a week before we left? Because I remember everybody was worried about <laughs> them canceling the trip. Uh, my man who said uh, they took his uh, designs oh, for uh, the, uh, the Air Revolution. I forgot his name. Shout to him. But Basil yeah. Basil or Basil or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Basil Lewis. Yeah. Basil Lewis. And uh, I remember everybody was worried, but I'm like, no, fuck that. Like, you know, we're still going to do the show the way we've been doing it. If they going to, like, they invited us for a reason. And so... You know, if they if they feel some type of way, then they can take that invite. You know, like that, I was ready for that. Now, fortunately, they didn't do that. We had a great time out there. Um, and so when it came to, like I said, like the recent seating, once they say, OK, we're not going to send you any product. I, mean, I was fine with that because I'm like, OK, well, you know, I mean, I mean, we're kind of like a forum or a platform with a voice just trying to say it how it is, share the facts. Keep yeah. it know, real. It's like, a, it's like a hobby. You know, yeah. we're passionate about it. Very passionate. Like I said, and we we try to be knowledgeable and, and Keep articulate. It real. Yeah. Even when we had debates, like me and Guru had a very passionate this is debate. Just Nike I mean, talk with a mic for Yeah. Them, we, you know? I mean, we, this is one of many debates we've had on the show. But people tune in for that because one, you're getting multiple perspectives. And then two, both of us are knowledgeable and we know what we're talking about. Guru's been around. He knows some shit I don't know. I've been around. I know some shit he don't know. And so, of course, there's going to be some back and forth. But at the end of the day, as a listener, you know what I'm saying? You're getting so much thrown at you and stuff. And so there's a lot to digest off of that. And so I, I value that. Once we get to the point where it was like, okay, well, we can't say this because Nike's going to send us this, this package or Adidas is going to, you know, send us this, then I'm like, we might as well just end the show at that point. Yeah, man. And to, to dump, uh, this point, the platform that you guys have, I just think, and, you know, I'm going to say my mom, I think it's imperative for you and platforms like yours 
to share, and I'm not even saying independence, black independence, but you know, across the board to let folks know there is much more than just what you see in these hype beats, I agree. You know, because I see truly that there's a difference between a sneakerhead and a hype beast. Sneakerheads own trees of all kinds. Yeah. A hype beast only owns the shit that you see that's about to come out and they'll be upset that they didn't get it because some white kid, no offense though. I used to score in the rectangle analogy for, for a hype beast and a sneakerhead. Yeah. He, he's selling all these shoes and people are taking L's in that app. But yet you're going to be mad at independence for doing what we do. And or, and or if, if one doesn't pre order, well, oh, we got what? You waited all this time just to take an L on the Nike app, but you want to complain about an a independent doing a pre order for three months. Don't make no, sense. I- no, I 100% agree, especially when you realize that it took Nike like a whole year and a half. So for y'all to turn around and have those shoes ready in three months is actually pretty fucking quick. Um, yeah. But but um, but no, you're right. And I think that was one of the reasons why we wanted to, we've had the uh, we've had Dev on the show. Um, we wanted to get you on the show because you're right. We wanted to use our platform because we, we do enough talking about Nike and Adidas all the time. But we also want to use our platform, like you said, to showcase platforms like Rock Deep and other independents that are out there because there are other options. I remember when we first started the show, um, you know, I was really, really trying to push more ASICs and New Balance news and stuff um, and Saccone and all that other stuff because I didn't want it to just be Yeezy Jordan, Yeezy Jordan every week. And so, I mean, Nike has been a topic of, you know, because they do a lot of dumb stuff as of, as of late. But if you, if you take the amount of time that you are discussing one particular topic, because we yeah. all know, you know, 30, 60, 90 second commercial costs a lot of money. And yeah. The amount of time if you're thinking about one shoe, you are giving them that much publicity. Are you getting that much back right. in revenue? So that's the way you, you know what I mean? And so if you divide that, that what you're discussing along, you know, a greater divide, then you, you know, you don't have to worry about, are we really talking about them too much? Because they ain't really giving us that much back in return as far as anything goes, product, uh, publicity, or anything else. Right. No, I 100% agree with you. I, I think as of recent, I've just taken a lot of pride in giving Nike shit. But uh, to your <laughs> point, <laughs> to... <laughs> To your point about your brand, like, where, first of all, where can people find you and follow you on social media, and where can they find your product and buy it? Uh, always on my website, rockdeep.com, uh, and you can find it on uh, Rock Deep Global, because some kid in India has uh, Rock Deep for some reason, and Instagram, let them keep having it. Uh, but Rock Deep Global on, social, on Instagram and Twitter, and you can find us at Rock Deep uh, on Facebook, and we have a couple private uh, groups, or not private, but other groups, that you can actually see stuff before it comes out because you can only do so much on social media before the shadow ban or just the algorithms don't let you show or let everybody. I, you know, you can have 30,000 followers, but only 100 people are paying you shit. And that is not it. I um, know. I hate that. They're just trying to, you know, make more ad money. So yeah. uh, but yeah, please, you know, give us a follow, Rocky Global on Instagram. Uh, check us out. And uh, we, we Oh, yeah, your thing. Facebook page is crazy. I'm a part of that. Yo, I love your Facebook page. Yeah, man, it's a lot of. <laughs> if we still have time, I, I've got a question I wanted to throw in. But speaking of your website, is it Shopify by chance? Correct. So, how do you feel about bots, and is that an issue for you and your company? Or like, I'm if sorry, someone, Sandy. like uh, bots or automated checkout software, has that been a yeah. problem for you with releases, and or how do you handle it when it happens? Because I know Shopify, it's not you; it's the platform that's botted. Hey, before like you answer that question, I, I feel like this is like when a. Uh, when a bank robber cases out the bank the day before, before they rob it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, 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 he asked for a reason. <laughs> no, this is relevant. No, I was well, messing though. with you. Because Shopify is a common oh, yeah. platform. We have that issue. Uh, we, we put whatever software we want on there. But the thing is, when it comes to bots, bots is something that whenever that person, um, that, that person's platform, whether it's Shopify, Booty ass Wix or any other platform, they control if bots can keep others because if you have a pre order, let's let's think about it in theory. It shouldn't get sold out. So it's and, and again, this is no shade on anybody who does pre order. But if you do a pre order, if a hundred thousand people order that shoe, a hundred thousand people should get that shoe. Unless you're living it, which you know, everybody you know, you, you might do that out of hype, you might do that out of you know, scarcity, but no one's making shoes at the amount that you know Nike is doing. I, I tell people often. We might make 1,500 to 1,200, maybe 800 pair of any style, any color, and then we move on to the next one. That's it. Where Nike, they're making that same retro, 150 to 250,000 pair a year. 
Yeah. So you're not really that special when you're getting that shoe as opposed to an independent who's putting something out. Because, you know, if we got up to the hundred thousands for one release, we still wouldn't be, you know, that's worldwide. We, we ship worldwide. We have customers worldwide, hiking and athletic. So you're still not going to really see a whole bunch of people with that same shoe. And when you do, people get excited. Like, you know, when two people got, you know, an Escalade and they drive me away, you know. <laughs> so my last question for you, do you make a size 15? Yeah, we go up to size 16. And I'm glad you asked that question, bro, because we're actually trying to go up to a size 18. But when you're an independent, it's not that feasible to do these sizes because molds cost money. Right, right, right. I can get what we call those Magnum Peak size brothers. Um, not anybody finish anybody off in the car or anything, but uh, when you're doing the Magnum Peak size brothers, that, that was a shout out to you. Guys, but, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can we can do more when we have more people buying from us. So we actually started. We, I mean, I started off. I'm a size 11. And I could only, when I began this journey, start off with a 10 and a half, 11, which is like a 44 year old. We're now up to a size 16, which is everything we've added. You can see we added three more sizes. Um, yeah. And it's too Monday because we're missing a, an entire market. So, yeah, we go to a size 16 now, and in the future, we'll be up to a size 16 for all our brothers in the motherland. That's what's up. We got I, got a, I got a question. Go ahead. Well, my question would be what, what does it take to get an independent brand into kind of like that national, the national scene, getting to like a foot lock or a finish line. Like what are those negotiations like to be able to get to that point? Get on our show. <laughs> well, <laughs> same, same way we met, um, and I, I, I'm going to give up the secret, bro. No, no, it. don't give up the secret. Don't do it. Rocky, I, I will, man, I'll put a plug. Right. It's about to be our most streamed episode. What I will say is you have to find professional platforms to be on because it can't just be social media like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You got to find the professional versions of those to be able to say, hey, because once you are, those people will find you. And if you got good stuff, you can't just be putting out Bobo, Alibaba shit all the time. You got to have independent, I mean, you got to have <laughs> uh, individual, creative type stuff. And I mentor to dudes all the time because if people ask, hey, Rock, why are you mentoring to others? Why do I mentor to others? Because if there could be a Nike Reebok and booty ass Under Armour, that's the person. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just getting beat up today. Tiger, uh, Rock D, and the Gas, uh, you know, and all these others. It's superb. There can be a lot of us because there's already a lot of them. Right. No, 100%. <laughs> 100 percent and i completely agree with you uh i'm definitely gonna get me a pair we definitely gotta do we gotta do a collab maybe we can collab on a pair. i was gonna say we need to collab like From if we're gonna notes, do our first collab i want it to be with the independent brand such as yourself especially a black owned one um yeah. don't find honest. somebody else to collab with uh, <laughs> 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 i'm playing i'm playing it was too easy Man, hey he let me get the limited he, edition version he's gonna he go break the cover barrier it, it, that <laughs> that's is what true. it is that's true he's gonna be the jackie robinson of uh, rock deep too now, so just, hey, well, we, well, how many of y'all own a pair of my shoes? I need to get a pair. I don't have a pair. I don't have a pair. I would like a pair, though. I need to order a pair. And this ain't pertaining to y'all, but this is what I use as a, an example. Everybody, we get we get probably thirty offers a day, and I'm not I'm probably under cutting the number. People ask for a collab, and that's cool. But for me, um, if we do that many collabs, some people think you owe them one. I'm like, look, if we did that many collabs, we wouldn't have time for all this shit. Yeah, sure. <laughs> have you purchased our shit yet? Why? Because we're gonna be making some some ill, just shitty, you know, quality shit. Yeah, you want to do a collab? Now you gonna have a shitty collab? Now I'm not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Jesus knows a lot of people were approached this, and uh, yep. our shit ain't. Shit, so, but yep. to that point, hey, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing that because for me, it's always gotta have a story, and we got a story because we, we got a uh, offline connection. No, I'm definitely. I'm going. Matter of fact, I'm buying a pair tonight. So as soon as no, we get I'm, out I'm of here. Gonna, no, I'm, I'm going to let you buy a pair, but I'm going to send y'all a pair pack. Just give me everybody's size. I'm finally fucking sneaker famous. <laughs> oh, wow. I've been waiting. <laughs> wow. Hey, wow. y'all ain't got gifted from the big brands yet? What was that? We haven't got gifted from the big brands yet? Somebody, 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 somebody else has, on the show has. Somebody has. It's just me. Somebody, somebody has. Somebody else has. Uh, no, get your finger out of my camera. Part. The finger is pointing. Somebody <laughs> has. Who's actually being wearing gifted apparel right now. Hey, you, you always got to spread the love with everybody on the day. Yeah, right, I try like right. Come on now, you know how that shit goes. I be I say that. I be hey, like, it's yo. his show. We get it. I know. I be like, yo, like, come in, like can finally. I get this? Can I get that? And he was like, no, we want to talk to you. And it's like, I, 
That's why I still. No. I it's can't. The, it's, I can't Caesar, it's the Caesar of Friends show. I can't put a gun to their head. <laughs> you a kingpin. You do it all the time. It's the Caesar of Friends show. That's what it is. Are you no, have a radio show? I look real talk. And, and and let me tell you, Kevin used to get really pissed off. It was a Kevin and Rock show. I I intentionally put his name first because I knew I you know I was a better talent. But he's funny. But every time people came to the car deal or anything, it was like, well, Rock. They would they would turn to me and say, Rock. How can we work this out? He'd be like, Kevin, like, what about me? But you always, you know, you try to look out for your partner, but it's not always possible because they don't want anything exactly. like that. Exactly. And just for the record, I want to say, if anybody I went for the bat the hardest, it is Guru, because I know how much he loves LeBron James. And when they came out with that, I don't know what year it was, but it was the Cleveland Cavaliers blue jersey. The, 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 uh, the, the different colors of uh, brown and burgundy going down the side. I asked them, like, yo, I need this. Guru even sent me a size. I told them. They said they're looking to it. And this thing I know, crickets, I, I bring it back up. And it was like, oh, I couldn't do my, it. My, my, well, I'll be asking for a product. Not the, the jersey said, yeah, I like it. But is that when you have brands quoting you or brands saying, oh, he makes great points or he's so knowledgeable, it's like, okay, well, how can you say that? Because you're using that someone. We went to the meeting. The meeting you went to, they had my stuff quoted. So that's yeah. why I'm asking, like, okay, you're using this to some point of reference. You that I've been me? In, yeah, and I've no, no, I'm talking about oh, that. the brand, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And I've been in your focus groups, and you said oh, you made great points, and I've like that's one reason why I said, okay, where's Barack? That? And you know this too because you was about to spill the beans, but it's all about networking too. And so, because mm -hmm. I do, you see, you know what I do, mm -hmm. so I do a lot of networking, and so I think that has a lot to do with it. So, after the show, I'm gonna I'm give them the keys. To the kingdom that you was about to give to everybody, he already, said, knows, he already said it. He no, said it without saying it. I know he said it without saying it, but some people are stupid. So I'm hoping I, I that pick, I picked up on that. I know. I was like, dog, like, cause now it's about to get real ugly. But I, 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 I think, I think we follow each other on there too. Oh boy, <laughs> let's, let's not talk about sure. it no more because I do not want to give <laughs> any more ideas <laughs> to people. But because now it's about to turn into it's about to turn into Instagram. Oh boy! It's about to I mean, you ugly. can weed things out on there though. Oh, like, you can tell. Right, last thing we need is many people on there doing stupid stuff. But they do that anyway. Rocky, I'll, I'll summarize that by saying I'm not the captain of the yacht, but I'm happy to be partying on the boat with you guys. That, who said that? Beanie Siegel. Maybe I'm not entirely. Feeling sure. in the air. I'm not a captain so of the you, yacht, but I'm on the boat. So you mean to tell me Dunks is quoting Beans lyrics? <laughs> Shout out to Dunks. This is why we got Dunks nah, around. Actually, was uh, what, what show was that? Uh, What's the show? But uh, no, this is. Uh, but, they got lost on the boat. What show was that? Love Boat? No. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <That's what it laughs> hey, Rock. And then always, whenever we travel, we're going to need somebody to talk to the cops if we get pulled over. So, you know, there's that. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> but no, we definitely appreciate you coming on the show, man, spending time with us. Man, we definitely going to have some conversations going forward. Do not make this the last time you come on here because, like you said, we want to promote you and other brands more. Um, cause you're right. Like, you know, we talk about Nike all day. We can talk about you all day too. So I appreciate you. I got over 200 styles just for everybody who's uh, watching. We, we are not building a shoe. We are building a brand and yep. we can have to wear an apparel for hiking, athletic, hunting, even everything in between. Uh, hell, when I was doing a hunting line, I didn't know as many as my people hunted that they do. I always thought because we were the ones that always being hunted. And I, I digress. Black people hunt? Uh, Carl Malone. Black people Black hey, Tom Malone is uh He hunt? People be looking for your product on every corner. I was say I hunt at the grocery store. And, 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 and real quick, I do want to just say like <laughs> I always did think it was pretty dope that you did hiking like hiking shoes. Yeah, that's yeah, how I, got yeah. it. I mean how I repurposed everything. I REI was my inspiration. I saw the REI real quick, I saw REI one night and I was like, you know, everybody was turning me down, giving me BS reasons why they couldn't see me. So like, oh it's great, you have to take another shoe down and put yours up. I was like, oh, y'all motherfuckers. Anyway, y'all y'all lying, but anyway. So I went, looked on the line, <laughs> called it Ari Ass selling boots for three, four hundred dollars. I'm like, wow, white people spend money. And I'm and I'm being for real. They so I repurposed all of my designs, and, and that's why you see that my hiking designs are really athletic hiking and you know, for all types of uh, uh, of types of hiking. So people love the colors, people love the styles, and that's why I tell my people, I could I would not be here collectively by black people if white people weren't here to be up front if I didn't start with hype. Period. That's crazy. There, there goes the yeah, one of the Wu Tang yeah. uh models right there. So mm -hmm. I like that black bear. That probably hard. With the honeycomb, with the honeycomb, right with the honeycomb yeah, on the honeycomb there. there. That's all right there. Yeah, I like that. Cool. 
But no, nah, man, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show. Like I said, do not make it the last time. We are going to stay in touch. And, uh, yeah. And, 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 uh, text me every size, bro. I got you. All right. I appreciate it, man. Everybody wears a size 15. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what we're talking about right there. And you, and you can cut this air on, man. I feel like I know you're a kingpin, but you got to feel like a breaking bag trailer in here. Man, I- <laughs> Duck. All right, we're about to get out of here because Guru's sweating. So, uh, But no, I appreciate now I you, I know man. why you brought him on. So you can cook while you were <laughs> 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 Make your drop-offs. You know, but I, I appreciate this, you, man. man. I forgot. Appreciate y'all, man. Y'all have a good one. You too. You too man. Thank you. Once again, that was Rocky Parrish, owner and CEO of Rock Deep. Definitely check him out. He got so many dope shoes. Like I said, um, Anthony Anderson reached out. I, and it, be- it's it's dope because it's all like unique. Like there, he doesn't have to worry about all this current bootlegger Bullshit. shit. Bullshit. Like yeah, you'll never hear us talking about he's him. He's actual. Like that. He's actual creator. That's see. That's what I'm talking. That's my point. When you actually create, you ain't got to worry about all that bullshit. And we could talk about you. We have these fun conversations about your product instead of talking about who's going to sue you next. You know, so, uh, but on that note, this is episode what two ninety seven. Guru up here fanning himself like he had a used to. I service. mean, I, you are reaching at a church service today, so I gotta make sure it's just, <laughs> just like it is. Kwame. You just need one of those fans. It's hot in here. You cut in here. I mean, you used to be part of the ball head crew, but you you uh you left us hanging. And that was for one yeah. week. Yeah, no, no, you, you, you ain't week. forget about that either. You ain't forget week. about that either, though. What going both? I dropped the top, guys. I'm part of the gang. Should oh. I do it? Why got something like that? No, 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 don't do it, man. White white dudes going, but unless you Stone Cold Steve Austin or Goldberg, nah. That, you don't want to do that. You give me Remy on higher learning vibes. <laughs> you don't do, do that. Don't you do guys that. gonna call me Gilbert? I won't do it. Uh, oh, that, that would be, be yeah. Gilbert. Man, that Gilbert was the funniest. First and foremost, a, a the sparklers. A bald white guy with a bunch I of piercings. Wait. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> I can't wait for the Dark Side of the Ring documentary on uh, Gilbert because I'm pretty sure he has a story to tell. But on any note, man, Gil- man Gilbert was the funniest shit. And like that back and forth between the Monday Night Wars. That was the highlight. That was the highlight to find the scrawniest white man you could find in America and just have him followed around with what smoke, uh, the fire extinguishers, the sparklers. Sparklers? Yeah. Bruh, that was the funniest spoof I've ever seen of any of No, actually, you want to know what's funny? What's that? I looked it up. He is the longest reigning WWE light heavyweight champion of all time. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, Gilbert, yes, bro. Yes. And the fucking show. I want to. Somebody put that on a t-shirt. Yeah, we got to end on that note because I don't think we can think of anything better than that. So episode two ninety seven, we appreciate. Shout out to Gilbert. Shout out to Gilbert. Look at this tattoo. Oh no, everything about that dude this is was hilarious. Like a, this is supposed to be like a watered down Goldberg. Yeah, you didn't know that. No, I, I don't want to show you that. You never knew that. Oh, uh, Gilbert was awesome. Well, how did you not know that? I only watched. Hey. I so watched the, 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 the same years. interest in everything. Hold on, right, intro, the intro to next week has to be a Gilbert. Interest. It has to be. Yes, hey, we like, we're yeah. like Goldberg. Gilbert highlights. <laughs> right. Are we're like mean, Goldberg and Gilbert's complex. That's why you guys didn't make them complex. And I'm mad now. I'm mad now. We're gonna end the show on the bad note. We started with on this high note talking about Gilbert. Are we doing a Father's Day episode? Uh, we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I was about right. to say, like, we're gonna talk about that one. Dunks on until next time. Yeah, so episode 297, like I said, we want to appreciate and show love to all our listeners and anybody that stayed on the live. Uh, make sure you tell your friends and family. Uh, let's get those numbers growing. Subscribe, give us some likes. And on that note, we will see you guys next week, maybe, possibly. Peace. Peace. What up, though? Another great show by the crew. The word of the week. Don't let your pride take over your life. It can cause you your freedom, your job. Just let things go. There's no sense in letting pride, ego, or you going out doing something that you know in the end will cause you trouble. Words are nothing. Your freedom is worth more than any trouble that will come your way from allowing your pride to take over situations. All right, it's your main man, Jump Man Bostic. I'm fading to the back from the basement of the Jays. I'll catch you next week. Make sure you tune in to another show and I'll have another word of the week for you then. Peace. <laughs>